Well, air were in action during the week against the Sheffield Steelers, and it was a game packed with incident, most notably some injuries picked up. Dennis Purdy, one of the top scorers for the Air Scottish Eagles, suffered a dead leg, which could keep him out of the game for four to five weeks, which, of course, won't take a genius to work out. He'll miss the Benson Hedges Cup final. Not good news for the Eagles or their coach, Jim Lynch. He's talking to Nick Rothwell. Jim, you lost Dennis Purdy through a thigh injury with a clash with Sheffield's Corey Bolio. You're not happy about the incident? No, we're not... Uh, uh... We're not thrilled about it. Uh, obviously, Dennis is one of our is our leading scorer this year and a very influential player on the team. Um, injuries happen in hockey. Uh, obviously, um, you know most the majority of them are accidents. But uh, we feel we were, we were a bit disappointed on the call on the night. But uh, Dennis came through it. Uh, it was pretty scary on the night, but uh, he came through it not too badly. And um, we hopefully will see him. It'd be a long shot to maybe see him for the final, but hopefully within two to three weeks. Will it really hurt the club if he's not there for the final? Uh, well, he's a very, as I said, he's a very strong player in the dressing room and on the ice for our team, but uh, we've got a lot of character players on the team, and maybe now it's time for them to pick up the slack that Dennis leaves behind. A couple of guys were visiting him the other day in hospital. They say he's all right? Well, he never got any sleep for when he was up there. The whole town of Air seemed to be traipsing through the hospital, so he's a very popular guy up there. Thanks, Jim. Okay, cheers. Well, Jim Lynch's Air Scottish Eagles are out on the ice. It's Super League action here right now that we're concentrating on. And the home team, the Bracknell Bees, look, there's their support. It's a very well-supported team. They're coming out onto the ice for this one. It's a league action. We're going to be talking more about St. Hedges, Hedges Cup a little bit later. But right now, let's join our commentary team, Bob Carroll. But first, Tony Millard. This game promises to be quite a battle. Air have won both matches so far this season against Bracknell, but the Bees themselves have only lost once at home in league games, albeit that 6-0 at the hands of leaders matches the Storm. Bracknell line up with Mark Bernard in goal to start with. On defence, Greg Burke and Todd Kelman. They're starting forwards are Tom Gomes, Jeff Johnston and Dennis Burke. For Air, it's Rob Dobson in goal. On defence, they start with Scott Young and Angelo Catavallo. Up front, Jamie Steer, Carrie Viette and Sam Grillo. Number 13 for Bracknell there is Dennis Burke, the left winger, the younger of two brothers in the home side. He hails from Boston in the USA. He scored seven League and Cup goals so far and amassed five points in his past five league games. Number four for air there is Scott Young, the big aggressive defenseman, not afraid to push forward. He's not six League and Cup goals to date. Air is his fourth British club, but he tries like hell for them. Well, there's the air team. A little conflict, they say, around their goalie, Rob Dobson. Team spirit building. Bob Grohl's alongside me. Bob, what are they trying to do? There's Jim Lynch looking on for the outside, perhaps. It's a bit of a psychological thing as they get into the game. Tony, all teams do that. They get around that goaltender, as you said, ice hockey is a team sport. They get in there, get the psychological element of this game going, and get their whole team moving as a unit. Well, Jim Lynch, of course, always behind the bench, but behind the bench tonight for the Bracknell Bees is Dave Whistle, their assistant coach. He takes the place of Jim Fairchuck. Their normal coach is away in Canada for a family bereavement. <laughs> Referee tonight, that's Andy Carson. He comes from Dronfield near Sheffield. Air tonight wearing the green and orange top strip with black shorts. They are in the darker strip as we face them. They're defending the goal to our right. Brackle Bees predict to be in the strike kit. They are defending the goal to our left. Brackle Bees and the Air Scottish Eagles. And straight away the puck deep into the uh, air defensive zone. And it's their captain, Angelo Catanaro, is number three. The ball's in possession is Jamie Steer. More on him in a moment. But forward by Catanaro. Harry Pierre doesn't collect it. Dumped into the corner by uh, Dennis Burke. Will we get the first penalty call of the match? That will be against the Air Scottish Eagles. It gives us a power play the way of the Bracknell Bees. Well, Scott Young there. They're perhaps waiting to see this, whether it's a cross check, but certainly on Dennis Burke of the Bracknell Bees. Scott Young coming out of the zone there. A bit uncharacteristic of Scott Young, I must say, too, Tony. Well, just 22 seconds, and uh, 
There is Scott Young, and the penalty is cross-checking on Scott Young, called by referee Andy Carson. And that power play now goes the way of the Bracknell Bees, and a test of the Air Scottish Eagles penalty-killing ability here. This is Rob Stewart, number 16. Tim Tapp out of the defensive zone, it comes, and Shane McCosh is the big defenceman that has to chase it. Stewart is on this side, men to front, left and right. Bees on the power play. Crack the Bees power play record, well their power play success so far, 20.9%. They've scored nine power play goals in 43 attempts in league action so far this season. And on point, Rob Stewart, number 16, Shane McCosh at 77, and they will surely be used. That's the shot deflected high into the crowd above there. The shot going in from Rob Stewart on the point. The man in the box there is uh, Scott Young, of course, for that uh, penalty. And the cross-checking call will keep him aside for two minutes. They're missing ball. They will because they also use Scotty Young as a penalty killer. Very much so. He's a great skater back there, Tony. And as you say, you know, his transition from defense to offense is so strong. That's a great attribute when you're trying to kill penalties. So they'll miss him dearly, but on the both, uh, on two points there. Well, still score is here, but it is the Battle Bees on the power play, and uh, just over a minute remaining for that man advantage. The 91 is Dale Jack, and the Posh is back here on the court. The Posh gets the shot away, kicked away by the goaltender Rob Dobson, kept in by the Posh. On this side, we have Junkin. Posh is going to have a go again. They're trying to get about great defensive cover there and eventually whacked away. Only out as far as Stewart. Dummies with the shot. Cover by Ron Camus. Dumping it into the neutral zone, number 24. The Bees come forward with Dale Junkin, who was the leading scorer last season in the Super League. This is Junkin again into the corner with Shula. 12 for the Scottish Eagles. Whacking it away is Matt Hoffman. No icing call, of course, because they're shorthanded. This is Chris Brank. Both teams change on the fly. Ward, the newcomer. Joe Ferricioli is number 47. Chance here for Domes, and a great save by Rock Dobson as the buck clears that defensive zone. And now it's here on the break. This is Mark Wolf, their alternate captain. Wolf hasn't got support as the Bees get back and cover. Still going. Busy time there for Mark Wolf. Penalty clock counting down, top right-hand corner of your screen. Just five seconds remaining. The Bees on the power play. Great defensive work with that penalty killing as the puck goes out. Bob Corolla did well there, that's what he did. Yeah, not allowing the Bracco Bees to settle in the offensive zone whatsoever. And that crisp passing that you do need when you're on the power play, Tony, never ever really happened. Look at this for a slap shot from Chris Brandt. He's dangerous anywhere, of course. That goes up into the seats just behind the nets there, here in the Bracknell ice drink but boy can he shoot a puck dangerous from anywhere with a crack and slap shot well there's there's impressive penalty killing success this season improved to 83.3 percent and in 36 times shorthanded they've only allowed six goals the thing about the brackle bees that was an opportunity for uh, for them tony to get up in this game air coming down all the way from scotland a few bus legs i know that they left last night but it still doesn't matter you know it takes a little bit of time once you travel that far Brackle on the attack. They can't keep that one in. Into the neutral zone. This is Tom Gomes of Portuguese descent. The chance here for Dennis Burke, number 13. Burke misses out. The delayed offside call by the linesman as they clear that zone. And this is Angelo Catanaro. He's the air captain. So impressive, so hard working. Clears that defensive zone. Run back by Gomes in the neutral zone. This is Scott Young who will benefit from his rest. Right up the ice, that counts as a shot on goal. Knocked down well there by Mark Bernard. First attempt he's had to save for the Bracknell Bees. But still they keep it in. Catanaro with the shot. Almost deflected away there by the st stick of Sandra Lowe, number 27. It's now the Bees away, dumped into the corner. The chase is on for Jeff Johnston. Round the back of the net it goes. Coming forward for the Bees there, 22, Brian Pellerin. But eventually cleared into that neutral zone. The officials wave on the icing call. And it's the Bees almost non-stop action here at the moment. This is frenetic. This is St. Pierre. Three on two situation. The offside call. Well, that was very, very tight. Well, still scoreless here. 
It was a bit of an unfortunate offside for the Air Scottish Eagles because it had it worked the other way. Not being offside, you see it there. Three on one for the Air Scottish Eagles. What a way to go into the offensive zone. We saw David, Davidson Pierre in possession there with a great opportunity, I think. Really been allowed to go ahead, but still the Air Scottish Eagles come forward with the reflection there. Fitz Bowes shot. Mark Bernard had to skill it tone dead. A chance for our first visit to our ringside reporter, Nick Rothwell. Thanks, guys. Just a couple of little things that I noticed in warm up. Um, because Air have a couple of injuries with Jeff Hode and Dennis Birdie missing, they can't run with those four lines that they've been so successful running with all year, and they've only got 10 forwards. But what they did in warm up was they double shifted a couple of guys like Mark Wolf and Sam Grolio. So they have actually been going with four lines in the warm up. We'll see if they can keep that up today. And I was talking to uh, Dave Whistle before as well and uh, about his position taking over from, from Jim while he's away. And when he had to do this before, uh, he was playing at the same time, which was really hard. But because they signed Colin Ward, uh, they, they've got that ninth forward, so they can run with the three lines. He doesn't have to dress. And uh, yeah, we'll, be seeing, we'll be seeing how they uh, run with that later today. And uh, back to you guys. Well, the face-off delayed for a distraction on the far side of the rink. The referee says, I want that light turned off. But uh, he's got it turned off, and now get on with the game. David St. Pierre trying to win the draw. But uh, coming away for the Bracknell Bees here is Matt Cote, their longest serving player. This is Cote again. David St. Pierre is number 17. Good ball checking, bumps him into the balls. Brown Peller in a chance there. Dobson, oh, that was so near and yet so far for the Bracknell Bees. A hit deep in the zone there, Tony, caused the turnover. Chance here, McCarsh deflection, and uh, well, Brian Pellerin didn't see that. Uh, the goalkeeper, Rob Thompson, didn't see that. And the action is still thick and fast. Here is Pellerin again. Ote tries to shoot on the turn, just off target. Bucks is can't knock it down. Number six is Vince Bow for the Scottish Eagles, trying to clear. Brian Pellerin behind his own net, evades the big check going in from Middlestack. Wins it back again. Support here. Away Bucks is his 39. This side, without a helmet there, is uh, Junkin. And still the bees in possession. Playing it about, playing for space. A chance here for Buxes, but uh, eventually the defensive clearance. And now we've got a three-on-one situation here. Getting forward here, Barber on the edge of the crease. Oh, great defensive cover by the bees there. Well, some super back-checking by the Brackle bees. As they worked very, very hard. As you know, they were the odd man out on that play. But come back into the zone, pick your man up. All to the other end, and Rob Dobson has to bring out his best to kick down that shot from Chris Brank getting forward. We saw the three-on-one situation earlier on in the period. Once again, it happening for the year. Scottish Eagles going into the zone, three of them. But boy, they're all coming back. That's number 11 there for the Bracknell Bees. Working away, Colin Ward. He's shown his corn here tonight, Tony. New guy coming into the team, trying to give it that little extra effort that you need. So the face-off has Dobson killed that one on the break. It's deep in the air, Scottish Eagles defensive zone, and it's Sean Barham winning the face-off for the Scottish Eagles. This is Alan Shuler combining well with Barham. Barham, number 16, comes away, locks it into the neutral zone. Great work here. Jamie Steer takes the tumble, and Barham wins it back for the Scottish Eagles. Cleared into the neutral zone here, and Ryan Camus is number 24, the big defenseman for air. Rob Stewart is going to chase the puck back for the Bracknell Bees. Knocks it into the neutral zone, knocked down by Camus. Camus' passing error feeds Ferricholi. Ferricholi has Brant in front of him, but Camus is the man with the cover for the Scottish Eagles once again. The break is on, knocked into the corner by Matt Hoffman. Jamie Steer in possession, wins it out here, shot goes in. Bernard can hardly have time to see that, and he'd be pleased that Brent comes back as that shot went in from Alan Schuler on the blue line. This is Steer, a chance here now. Again, Bernard kicks it out. Steer with the shot! The Air Scottish Eagles have gone in front. The Air Scottish Eagles have scored through Jamie Steer, who's netted his fifth league goal of the season. His 11th in all-ice hockey. It's Bracknell nil, Air 1. Jamie Steer picks up that loose puck and eventually comes back to him on a bit of a rebound. Just to go over the sprawling Mark Bernard. But Bracknell had the opportunity here in Chris Brandt to clear that puck out of the zone. Leisurely play, if you like. Didn't work that time. Mark Bernard goes down. Good goal. By Steer. Go upstairs. 
Well, there it is, air in front, and Jamie Steer a chance to celebrate, Bob, because Jamie Steer's wife has given birth to a daughter in the last 48 hours. Well, what I a know celebration that, for him. I know that he flew down here tonight, and rather than traveling with a team yesterday who came down from bus, but uh, congratulations uh, to Jamie and his wife. Well, he'd be pleased with that. Coming across is uh, Montanari, number 10 for the Scottish Eagles in the darker strip. The break is on here, the chase is on for Borba. Borba lacks support, but gets it now, and it's only Mark Wolf had connected with that one. Well, Mark Bernard would have had some rubber to keep out, as he does there. Bernard being peppered at the moment. Brackle Bees, though, on the break in the neutral zone. Dennis Burke provides the ammunition for Johnston on the far side. This is back to Dennis Burke. Not round by Tom Gomes, but one by Scott Young for the Scottish Eagles. Young is going to get forward into the corner. Big aggressive attacking defenseman there. Run back by Bracknell. This is Tom Gomes. Gomes knocks it around the boards. Sam Golo is 27. Shot goes in quickly there for the Scottish Eagles from Jamie Steer. Chance here, shot goes in from Carrie Biet. Ricochets up into the crowd. That gives us a chance to have a look at the lineups. Bracknell the lineup. First sees Mark Bernardi goal. Four assists in one game for him last year. Matt Cote, the longest serving player. Two brothers, Greg and Dennis Burke. Gomes with Portuguese descent. Chris Brands are good on the set plays. Dale Junkin, last year's top scorer in the Super League. There we see the Brackle Bees with their coach tonight, Dave Whistle. Getting back to what Nick Rothwell said on Dave Whistle, obviously not easy to play and coach, and I think that's something that's happening very much in the Super League this year. You've got to con concentrate on one issue or the other. Certainly Dave Whistle will be very valuable to this side behind the bench here tonight. Well, interesting tactical call there from Bob with Dave Whistle having to, if you like, supervise things from the sidelines. But here come the Scottish Eagles. That's Joey Middlestat, number 44, knocking it around the balls. Now Junkie collecting the loose puck. Sam Grillo trying to win it back for air. Knocks into the neutral zone. This is Joe Middlestat now. Get to score his first goal. He's joining air this year, Joe Middlestat. Big, tough defenseman. He is. He's been brought in there for that physical presence. And uh, he's very good and strong defensively. Well, we're going to get another penalty here, which will uh, see air have to uh, deal with another penalty killing exploit. And it will give it a second power play of the game to the Bracknell Bees. And this time, taking a walk is Vince Bowe. Andy Carson catching Vince Boa there, doing a little bit of interference on the forecheck created by the Bracknell Bees, just to allow them, ease it up, and allow Ayer to get out of their own defensive zone. It was right there to make that call. It's that little interference that can be either cause to pick, or is it interference? Interference is the call, and the man in the box is Vince Bowe. And this is the 37th occasion on which Ayer have been shorthanded in league action so far this season. They conceded six goals on those. There's a perfect example, Tony, when we see it all the time, just allowing that player that little extra chance to get out of the zone, a little extra time. It's so very, very important in a game like ice hockey where everything's so quick out there. Knocked into the corner by John Parker, number seven for air there, newcomer. Scored his first goal for the club uh, in midweek. And now here come the Brackle Bees. This is Jones, the nippy right winger, Portuguese descent. Back to Joe Paraccioli. On the point is Chris Brandt now, who's going to get a shot away. Takes a deflection on the stick of Parco. This is Joe Ferrancioli. All hell lets loose on the edge of the net. The goal comes adrift, but Rob Dobson stays calm, cool and collected as he simply lies on the puck. Well, Bracknell starting to do a super job of letting that puck move and do the work. Getting the box of the Air Scottish Eagles moving a little bit. Across and back over the last player on the play being Ton Gomes in front of the net there. But the puck coming across once again. And also forcing Dobson in the air nets to make that move there. Well, he takes up a lot of space in those nets as Rob Dobson. And a very effective goaltender with a great save record so far. Face off then. Comes back. Grant feigns the shot. Makes space to Perricoli to his right. Back to Ferracioli. Good defensive cover. Knocked in by Dennis Burke this time. 
Round the boards it comes, and that'll clear that defensive zone. And now the battle is joined with Chris Brank getting back well. We've covered Dennis Burke in possession for the Brangle Bees. Collides with his teammate there. He says, I'm not, that's enough for me, I'm going to the bench. But still the Bees come forward on the power play. A great chance here for Ward. A good save by uh, Rob Dobson there. Colin Ward over second, his first goal for the Bees with that one. Bit of an innocent play there. Bracknell actually losing the puck in neutralized territory. But Joe Ferraccioli bringing it around there. And he sets his play up for Ward, who gets a shot on goal. Again, Dobson does a great job. A big fella tries to get that whole body in front of that puck. With Vince Bowe in the penalty box, still power play in the way of the Bracknell Bees. Man advantage. And the face off deep in the Air Scottish Eagles defensive zone. Kicked away by Joe Middlestep. Knocked around the boards, kept in well by Rob Stewart. This is Dale Junkin in possession. Playing a 1-2. Trying to get things going. It's back with Junkin. This puck around the net. It's in the net. It's squeezed through behind the net there. And the final touch at very, very close range there, I think, was uh, put in for the uh, Bees by Wade Buxis. Somewhat of a standard set play by the Bracknell Bees because they get that defenseman pushing in from the offside wing to try and bring the box of the Air Scottish Seagulls down. In other words, collapse it. The player will be coming in from the top of the screen, just drive for the net, force all kinds of players and actions, any sort of a rebound, and you're there to pick it up, which was certainly the situation on this play. Peller in there, hanging onto that puck a little bit, but shoving it underneath the sprawling Rob Dobson. Well, power play goal then for the Bracknell Bees. Wade Bucks is on the power play, and it's now level pegging. The first of the Bucks is Over on the break, Ward has got support. Great save from Mark Bernard. Mark Bernard. Alert and needing to be as it's tied up level pegging. Bit of a very standard play here, one on one. Look at how Bernard concentrates on the shooter coming in there. Just stacks those pads up, lets any sort of angle come through. Well, we know the advantage of power plays, Bob, and certainly the Bracknell Bees needing that second power play of the game to equalize, and now they're really back in it. Well, it is important, you know, I mean, Bracknell have had two opportunities. In this first period, they've capitalized on one of them, but that power play certainly starting to work for them and uh, causing all kinds of havoc for the Air Scottish Eagles, especially deep in that defensive zone. Well, great defensive work there. Getting back well was Alan Schuler, but there's a second goal! And this time it's Bob favorite player, Joe Ferratoni, that's slotted that home. And the Bees have come from behind to go in front. It's now Bracknell 2, Air 1. Look at this one-for-one -one race here, Chris Brandt. Winning that battle, and he catches the trailer. Mericioli on a one-timer. They don't come any prettier than that. So well, that's what it's all about. Whoever wins that battle, it's Chris Brandt instead of Alan Schuler, And that's what causes the goal. And Joe Mericioli gets himself on the scoreboard. Well, Joe Mericioli spent a lot of time last season injured. But he is a major player here in this Bracknell side, and he's played his part now in putting them in front. And now the fans are cheering here as that puck's cleared up the ice. Icing will be the call, and the face-off will be back down in the air the defensive zone. Well, Joe Conaccioli is a key player, isn't he? He certainly is, Tony. The, uh, you know, as you said, he was injured last year, and that was one of the problems, I think, that the Bracknell Bees had, because he offers this club a tremendous amount of experience. And when you can get him out there doing the things that he does best, I'll tell you, he's going to be a very, very valuable asset for this Bracknell Bees club. Two goals, 47 seconds apart, wholly appropriate for number 47, Joe Ferraccioli. This is Shane McCosh. Newcomer now on the break here, a great effort here, this is Borba. Borba on the break, Bernard with the save, but what a chase back by Shane McCosh. And certainly the defensive qualities of the Bees test a good ball with that one. For those defensemen watching out there, what? well, we don't see it. Shane McCosh shoots the puck in the zone. Of course, it doesn't get all the way through, but he has to make a Jalen race there to try and catch. Oh, well, there it is, it didn't go in. Great pass up. Boba in alone, 
And McCosh puts the old wheels on to make the save and help him out. The old goaltender there saying, good job, defenseman. Well, that goaltender again producing a good save, but that gives us a chance to look at the visiting squad from the Air Scottish Eagles. Air Scottish Eagles here, the away team tonight in the darkest strip, with Rob Dobson in goal, the influential Scott Young on defence alongside Captain Angelo Catanado. Parco is the new player up front, that's John Parco in his second game. Action back deep in that uh, Brackle defensive zone. This is Borba, who had a great chance a few moments ago. Held up against the boards by Matt Cote. Squeezed back along the boards, and now Brackle and V's come away. This is Brian Peller in good puck control. A chance here on the far side here with Shane McCosh getting forward. Bucks is on the edge of the crease looking for his second goal of the night. Joe Middlestat with a the clearance. There's some sharp hands there by Wade. Buxis, as you saw that pass, he was almost out of the play there, but just manages to tip it for the big shot on goal. This fellow Parker is quick, the just off target there as Bernard gets down and kills the angle. The goal leading a charmed life, but I know John Parko, the 26-year-old newcomer from Sault Ste. Marie, is looking impressive already. Well, Parko started the season in Kofboyan in the German DEL, and uh, as we said, we saw him in warm-up, Tony, and the boy, he has got some wheels. Well, that fellow, Matt Cote, has been around a long while. He's the longest-serving player for the Bracknell Bees. They talk about newcomers in John Parko on the other side, but uh, Matt Cote there, well, he's been around his eighth, current se eighth season with Bracknell now. I think he's the longest-serving member of the Bracknell Bees, Matt Cote. How about that? He's five foot nine, but look at the weight he possesses, 14 stone, four pounds. Former draft pick, Tony, of the Winnipeg Jets in the National Hockey League. Well, while we were talking there, Dale Junkins in the box with a two-minute penalty for hooking, and that will produce a power play now. The way of the Air Scottish Eagles. Let's have a look at it. Parko with a puck just in the zone. There's the old latch put on by Junkin. Parko goes down, and Mr. Junkin goes to the penalty box. Chance for the Air Scottish Eagles to get forward. A chance for goal, a brilliant save there by Mark Bernard, and a chance to draw attention to the extraordinarily good penalty killing record for the Bracknell Bees because they've only allowed one goal. Chance to have a look at this first. Well, I'll tell you, Bracknell gets this puck out of the zone. It's pay dirt for them. Scott Young manages to keep it in. Just about a very good scoring opportunity for the Air Scottish Eagle. Well, they haven't considered a power play goal in the last 30 times shorthanded. Just one all season in the league. And I can tell you that was scored by Steve Thornton of Cardiff back on the 12th of October. Air on the attack. Played around, they're looking for support here back on the blue line, but the defensive qualities of Bracknell can be fully demonstrated here. This is Hoffman with the shot, knocked down. Byron could knock the rebound in. Bracknell, and a word about that in a minute, this uh, box like defense kicked away by Bernard. What a thought going into their defensive technique, Bob, on these uh, power plays. They get a penalty call here. And that, I think, will now level it up. Well, I'm, I'm not going to be surprised here if this is a call from a hit from behind or a check from behind by Andy Carson. Sean Byram going. But the puck being played along the boards here. Fight. Burke looking for something. There's the hit from behind. Well, it's an interesting call because you read that exactly right, Bob, with the check behind, carries a two-minute minor and also a ten-minute penalty for Sean Barham. Well, it's the injury factor there that creates the ten-minute misconduct penalty on it. And that's what bothers most of the players because if you... But anyways, the two plus ten, the ten minutes, because of the... In the injury element of that call, Tony, that's the one that bothers the players, all the officials, everybody at the moment, because if you go into that barrier, when it's from behind, you've got no protection whatsoever. Very difficult as well to try and get your hands up and protect your blow. Well, as a result of that, of course, the 10-minute misconduct penalty, another man has to, in fact, serve the two minutes so that somebody comes back onto the ice. And Sean Barham will be in the box for close to 12 minutes. And Dino Borba is the man alongside him, sitting out the two-minute penalty. Power 
power play. Of course, eliminated by that. Very shortly, it will come back to a power play for the uh, Bracknell Bees. But as far as the statistics are concerned, another power play, another penalty kill successful for the Bracknell Bees for that short spell. They've done a very good job this year when they're in a shorthanded scenario. But, you know, this ring is very conducive to the style that the Bracknell Bees play. And they've had a very successful record, Tony, at home, as we've talked. Blue dumping it into the corner. The chase is on. Bracknell in possession now coming forward. Good stick handling there by Ferratoni all the way. He has gone all the way. And Dobson had to produce a save at point blank range. Well, not the type of player I would consider as being coast to coast as we talked about before, but Ferraccioli putting the moves on. And I'll tell you, he got the job done, didn't he? I think he ran out of room more than anything. All of a sudden, Rob Dobson was right in front of him. Didn't have anywhere else to shoot that puck. Air yeah, Scottish Eagles 2, uh, Air yeah, Scottish Eagles 1, Bracknell 2. There's those quick hands there, Ferraccioli. It's all happening there. As I said, just ran out of room right before the goalkeeper. Had he got another move in hand there, I'm sure he would have scored. Desperately close to a third for Bracknell. But it's still 2-1 in favour of the home team. Now below us, it's Bracknell back to full strength, and it's now power play. The Bracknell beat the junkie back on the ice. Remember, sitting down below us on behalf of Sean Barham, we have Dino Borba sitting out the two minutes, and he'll be back on the ice to bring them up to strength at the end of this penalty. But now, on the break, that, that would have been offside, the officials letting it go. Jamie Steer hadn't cleared the attacking zone. But now it's Bracknell coming forward. Dale Junkin knocking it into the corner, fresh from sitting his time out on the penalty box. This is Rob Stewart, number 16. Back to Junk in 91. Shane McCosh is back on the blue line. They will look to feed him as air close it tight. Junk in tries to create space. Good defensive cover by Vince Bow. Penalty is over. Dino Borba sitting out the two minutes for Sean Barham is back on the ice. The yeah, Scottish Eagles are back up to strength. This is Joey Middlestaff. Up the ice, and that'll produce an icing call. If both teams are welcome, breather, and both survive in the power play in turn. Well, of course, Air Scottish Eagles suffering a few injuries with Purdy out as we spoke, and Jeff Hode not playing tonight as well. An added disadvantage when you got Sean Byron sitting in the penalty box. That's three guys losing them for 10 minutes. Once again, a little more pressure on the players that they're using at the moment to try and keep themselves in this game. I think we do. should emphasize, Bob, that of course that 10-minute uh, penalty on Sean Barham is a personal penalty. It's just he that sits in the box. His team can't use him. They remain at full strength. Shortens the lineup as we've discussed. And as you said, you know, they need to have all their guys available and ready to play because it's it's turning into a very physical game out there, and that'll have its ploy on the players as this game progresses. Problems out of the face off. The referee Andy Carson not too happy. Johnston is removed and Tom Gomes, the number 24, for Bracknell is going to take the face off instead. The draw won by Davis and Pierre. This is Scott Young, number four for air. 12 is Matt Hoffman knocking it around the boards. But still Bracknell keep it in. Hellman it is there. This is Angelo Catanaro, the captain, taken into the boards. Still managing to clear it into the neutral zone. Catanaro tries to get it forward. Delayed offside call as the puck takes a bounce. Out into the uh, Team benches, or just beside the team benches, and that will produce a face-off just inside the Bracknell blue line. Bracknell two, air one, which is under five minutes in this first period to go. There's Dave Whistle. He's got some work to do tonight as coach. Took the skates off tonight, Tony, as we said, but uh, very tough to play and coach in this Super League this year. And I think Brackle made the right choice there with uh, Jim Pierchuk uh, away in Canada on a family bereavement. Scott Young knocking the puck forward. One by Borba on the edge of the, or just inside the blue line. Can't get the shot away. Jeff Johnson it is to complete the clear. This is Angelo Catanaro, the air captain. Good dummy. Feeds a man to his left is Mark Wolf. This is Joe Ferraccioli. Ferraccioli scorer of the second goal for Bracknell, loses possession. This is Borba coming away. 
Scott Young almost deceived by his own player there as Catanaro just clears the danger and now a good skate here from Montanari who's got support right and left. A great defensive cover there for the Bracknell Bees and Rob Stewart. This is Ferricioli in possession. Almost takes a deflection, the clearance completed here in the end by Mark Wolf, combining well with Alan Schuler. Schuler again playing his part, but he can skate to his own player. This is Ward, the newcomer, and Ferracholi with him, number 47. Good backhand pass for Crawford on the over. Sam Grillo is number 27 for air. Remember wearing the darker strip, green and blue. This is Bran Pellerin knocking the puck into the corner. Air trying to build from the back. Being denied space by the four checking of blizzards of Dow Junk in there. And read well by Jamie Steer. Now flipped up the ice by Alan Schuler. And that will produce an icing call. Take the face off back down into the uh, air defensive so zone. The following people to the penalty box, please. Jack Gives us an opportunity to have a look at what's been right happening here. so far. The Air Scottish Eagles went in front with a goal from Jamie Steer. Came back straight away, did the home side Bracknell B, scoring on the power play through Wade Buckshis, closing counter. A second goal, Joe Ferracholia enabled him to come from behind and go in front and lead by two goals to one. Middle stack. This is Vince Bow. Brackle on the attack here. There's Makosh on the backhand, produced that. Well, bodies flew everywhere to keep the puck out. Some great patience there on that play and getting the backhand shot. I'll tell you what, that's not easy. That's Makosh there, but look at that. He tries to go upstairs too. And of course, at that stage, Dobson doesn't know where that puck's going to go. Because the backhand is such a difficult puck to stop when it comes to goaltending. Well, Rob Dobson, the tallest goaltender in the Super League, and uh, certainly gets up there for those. Hopefully the next one will go on the ice, Tony. Make some lift on the first one a little bit. The next one you want to shoot right along the ice. This is McCosh back on the blue line for Bracknell, nearly taking a deflection off the skates of Wade Buxis. The officials letting that go. And the deflection as it was shot out of that defensive zone. Air getting forward, but Bracknell with the cover is effective here and now moving forward with a purpose now Junkin is on this side Junkin's going to get the shot away and Dobson produces yet another save this time with his right pad some great three on two stuff there by the Brackle Bees one guy going wide another guy driving for the net and of course the shot going to Junkin there on that particular play good stuff that's what you want to see on a three on two situation try and isolate the one man end to end stuff as Bram Pellerin switches play this is Matt Hoffman for the Scottish Eagles John Parker, the newcomer, taking leave of absence, as you might say, as they change on the fly. Break here, this is Borba. Lithuanian international tries to create space and does. Goes one way, goes the other, gets it back here, Montanari. Well, the puck was there waiting on the edge of the crease to be put into the net, and now Scott Young is going to have to get forward to break on here, too, as Catanaro provides the cover. This is Borba, who seems to be taken down. The officials wave that on, cleared away by Greg Burke. <laughs> Scott Young is still going, Scott Young still goes. And the goaltender Bernard, he's alert to Catanaro. Goaltender is off because we've got a delayed penalty called here. Goaltender off to our right, which allowed six out skaters, but only for a matter of a couple of seconds. And now we're going to have a penalty down below us. Going into the box for Bracknell, and will create a power play the way of the Air Scottish Eagles. Scott Young just making a move there at the blue line to try and get that shot on goal, which he eventually does. But it's a trip by Jeff Johnson, I think, who's going to go into the box for two minutes on that play. Well, with 58 seconds left on the period, Jeff Johnson will have to serve the end of this period until the start of the next one, and this Air scored equalising goal. Tripping penalty, the man, the victim, Scott Young, of course. 
Well, that's one thing about Scott Young. His lateral movement is so very good, Tony. You can see he makes that one quick move to get around the guy. And, of course, once you beat one man, then you know that you've got a scoring opportunity, especially if you're in a team zone. Yeah, coming forward on the power play. This is Sangrelo. Smash from Grant knocks him off. Bernard knocks it around the boards. Silia keep it in. But now it's Bracknell, short-handed and coming away with pace. This is Chris Brandt. Brandt switches play to Joe Ferracioli. Mark Walker is the number eight for the Scottish Eagles coming forward. Support to his right from Montanari and Borba. Puck knocked into the corner, the chase is on, but too quickly from Borba going in, produces offside call. Offside call will take the puck right down into the air defensive zone. And uh, the officials deciding that is the appropriate course of action. Well, once again, they're just not getting across that red line in on a dump. It's a very close call, often difficult sometimes. You can see that Andy Carson was talking with his linesman there. He wasn't certain whether that came from behind the red line. The result, the icing call goes and back down into the bracket territory. Well, I don't think the Air Scottish Eagles agree with that either because they were arguing with the officials, but all's well that ends well, and we're underway again. It's Bow number six behind his own net. Back on this side is Matt Hoffman. Closing seconds of the period. There on the power play. Puck dumped into the corner. Hooter goes, bring down the curtain on a lively first period. A period that saw Jamie Steer put the visiting side in front. But then the equaliser on the power play came from Wade Buxis. 47 seven seconds later, Joe Ferraccioli it was that put Bracknell Bees in front. We go to the interval with Bees leading by two goals to one. Coming up on Sky Sports, more live ice hockey. It's the big one, the Benson Hedges Cup Final, the Air Scottish Eagles against the Cardiff Devils next Saturday, 7 o'clock on Sky Sports 3. It's going to be an absolute thriller, that's for sure. Meanwhile, we're live and exclusive in Bracknell. It's league action, the Bracknell Bees taking on Air Scottish Eagles on Sky Sports 3, and that's the way it's looking at the moment. Two goals to one, the Bracknell Bees. The Air Scottish Eagles took the lead. Look at that, shots on goal, fairly even between the two sides. And really, it's been quite a balanced first period, all in all. Well, Jim Furichuk, the Bracknell Bees coach, is away in Canada. There's been a bereavement in his family. So Dave Whistle is looking after the Bees in his absence, and he's talking to Nick Rothwell. Dave, uh, Jim would be proud of you guys right now. Yeah, we're playing a good, smart period, and uh, that's what we asked every guy to do before the game started. We just got to play it smart and just go from there. How are you finding uh, filling in as head coach and not having to play? It's a little easier not having to play when you're behind the bench. You can concentrate a little bit more just on coaching. Um, we've got enough guys out there doing their jobs. I mean, yeah, it's going well. The the work ethic for Bracknell Bees is really famous. Chris Brand evident on that uh, four check that caused the goal. Yeah, I mean, he works hard all the time. Practice, game, that's just the type of player he is. And, I mean, he's a good leader. I mean, everybody should be following his footsteps. And hopefully everybody keeps going tonight and hopefully come up with a win. And uh, what's your job now? How do, how do you keep these boys uh, going like this? Oh, I just keep rotating the lines. I mean, they know we need this game. Uh, it's an important game for us. And, I mean, we're at home. We just want to win every game possible. So they know what's on the line. Thanks, Dave. Thank you very much. Dave Whistle, the temporary coach for the Bracknell Bees, talking to our man Nick Rothwell. Vezio Sacratini, he'll be pleased because the Bracknell Bees kept the pressure up during that period, didn't they? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a tough building to play in, and uh, they, they like to come in with a 2 1 2 4 check, and they like to pressure the puck, get it deep and pressure. And that's what they did through the first period. Of course, it looked ominous for them at first. The Air Scottish Eagles took the lead through Jamie Steer. Nice for him, of course, because he had a baby a couple of days ago. So that was uh, a nice for him, but. It was a little bit sloppy by, uh, by the Bracknell Bees, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a turnover high in their defensive zone there, and Jamie gets it to uh, uh, Wolf, and he just gets a shot on net, and he goes to the net, picks up the rebound, and shoots it upstairs. And nice goal, good patience by Jamie to put it upstairs. And you can see it there, the uh, Bracknell Bees really caught on the hop, really. Yeah, they were caught flat-footed there, and uh, that was Hoffman that brought it to the net, and uh, Jamie jumped on the rebound. Well, Air kept up the pressure, but there was the Bracknell Bees who got the next goal, and it came really a good time for them, didn't it? Because they needed to get that goal when they got it. Yeah, they had two chances in the power play, and uh, here's good. They set it up on the right side, and they uh, they worked it well from there. They 
obviously they're looking for Brandt, but here they just get it to the net and they outnumber the guys in front of the net, two to one. And Pellerin and Buxus just hacking away and I think Wayne puts it in. Bracknell, of course, taking advantage there of some, some sloppy defending by a... Yeah, they're well done the power play and they're just trying to get the puck to the net and uh, outnumber the, the defenseman down low and uh, Wayne got him through his legs. And, well, Bragnall, of course, didn't take long to strike again because it was 47 seconds later when Ferraccioli got on the end of this goal. Now here's great, great work by uh, Brandt, who just, you know, hustles all the time. He's, he works hard all the time. He outmuscles the guy here and turns it up. And uh, it's a great play just to see Joey coming in, Ferraccioli, and he one times and beats Dobson on the ice. It's just a great goal, great effort. Ferraccioli, to me, looked like he was having a great period that period because he came back with quite a few shots on goal after that. Not all yeah. successful, of course. Yeah, he's a very clever player. He's not very known for his uh, speed or not, but he's got good hands and good vision, and he uses all the guys on the ice. You know him quite well, don't you, because you played with him in Italy? Yeah, I played with him in Italy for a year, and a great guy, great team guy, and uh, I'm glad to see him score one tonight. The yeah, Scottish Eagles do look as though they're missing something. Of course they are, they're missing Dennis Purdy. Do you think that he is really a crucial ingredient to their success? Well, he's been scoring a lot of goals for them, and I'm sure they miss him, but, I mean, they got a lot of players, a lot of quality players there, and they pull together very well, and they got a good team. What's Jim Lynch going to say to his team now? What's he saying? What does he want from them in the second period? Well, yeah, I'm sure he's going to tell them to try to be more aggressive and forecheck a little more. I think they've been sitting back a little bit more, waiting for the play to come to them, and maybe they'll come out a little more uh, aggressive. Do you see a goal coming early on in the second period from them? Yeah, they, I mean, they've had chances. Bernard's played well, and uh, yeah, I think they'll score. Thanks very much, Betsy. Yeah, well, there's been plenty of Super League and other action in ice hockey this week. You can catch it all here in Rink Roundup. Air took on Cardiff on their own ice in a taster of what's to come next week in the Benson and Hedges Cup Final. Despite Mark Montaneri tipping this one in to make it three all, the third period belonged to Cardiff. They grabbed three markers. This one, the pick of the bunch coming from Steve Moria. Final score, Air 4, Cardiff 7. It was a game of two periods when the Steelers traveled to Basingstoke. The first and the third. The Bison raced to a 6-1 lead, but despite five goals from Sheffield in the third, they couldn't catch up. A rare thing in Super League nowadays, 17 goals, 10 of them coming from the Bison. It was one-way traffic most of the night when Nottingham took on Newcastle. And goaltender Wayne Cowley had the unenviable task of facing shots like this from Derek Laxdahl. Nottingham is always strong in their own house. It was another tight game in one of the Super League's derbies. Berg leveled it for Bracknell to make it one all, but it was the B's only goal of the game. Basingstoke got the edge in the third and scored a couple more. This one, a shot from Darren Hurley. And in the news this week, Shannon Hope had his testimonial on Tuesday night at Cardiff Ice Rink. A packed house paid tribute to Shannon, who's been in Cardiff since the birth of the Devils. Well, apparently there was a lot of fun and games at Shannon Hope's testimony. A man who knows all about that, Betsy Sacratini. It was a good night, yeah? Oh, it was a great night. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, and are you going to say anything else about it? Well, Paul Shannon, Monty, I'm just... Here. Yeah, well, I mean, Shannon, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know how he is. But it was great to see the turnout there. It was a great support. It was about 2,000 people there, and uh, everybody had a great time, and yep. I'm really happy for Shannon. Back to the serious stuff. Your win over air. How important psychologically is that for you? Well, it was important. I mean, they came down to our rink and beat us 7-4, and it was just ironic we went to their building and beat them 7-4, so everybody's looking forward to next weekend. How do you see the league shaking up at the moment? Because, as we said before, there are a lot of teams who are creeping up there, aren't they? Manchester looked like they were they were really streets ahead, but at the moment, it's anybody's game, isn't it? Oh, I mean, anybody. Uh, I said it before, I mean, if you don't you don't show up and play your, your best game or play a good game, you're going to lose points, and... I mean, there's so much parity, and uh, every game is so important right now. You've got a few games in hand at the moment, so Paul Heavey is not sweating too much, despite you not having the best of league positions at the moment. Yeah, we haven't had the best start, but I mean, we've, uh, we're still in there, and uh, we've got games in hand, but we've got to win them, and we've got to take one game at a time. Betsy, thank you very much. Well, at the moment, it's the Bracknell Bees 2, the Air Scottish Eagles 1 in the Super League. We're heading towards the second break. Great fans here making lots and lots of noise. It was Ferraccioli who made it 2-1 to the Bracknell Bees. The goal coming, the second goal for the Bracknell Bees in 47 seconds. See you after the break.
coming up on Sky Sports. More live rugby union. Can England restore some pride? They lost to New Zealand last week. They've lost to South Africa today. Can they redress the balance next Saturday at Twickenham? It's live and exclusive on Sky Sports 2. One o'clock there. England taking on New Zealand. Right now, though, it's live Super League action. Bracknell taking on air. And we're on Sky Sports 3. That's the, uh, the score at the moment. The Bracknell Bees 2, the Air Scottish Eagles 1 after the first period. Betsio Sacratini, Cardiff's top scorer from last season, is with me for the game. Betsio, this looks like a small ice pad, but you say it's no smaller than the others. It's just a very bijou compact rink, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, uh, the people in the crowd is right on top of you, and it gets very loud in here, and uh, Bracknell play well at home. So it's quite intimidating for you as an opposition player to come here. Yeah, it's intimidating. Uh, I mean, just like I said, the people are right on top of you and they're loud. And uh, Bracknell, they, they use that to their advantage. What is it like going to the bigger rings, the, she the Sheffields and the Manchesters? How does the atmosphere compare there? Oh, it's great. I mean, you come out and there's eight, eight 10,000 people out there and it's, it's great to play in venues like that. And it's a lot of fun. Thanks very much, Betsy. Yeah, well, we're almost ready to face off for the second period here. Let's join our commentary team, Bob Carroll, but first, Tony Millard. As Gabby said, it's the home team, Bracknell, leading by two goals to one. As the visitors air them went in front through Jamie Steer, Wade Bucks is netting the equaliser on the power play for Bracknell, and Joe Ferraccioli it was to put them 2-1 in front. Second period, it's going to be, I'm sure, very frenetic, with just one goal in it, and highly competitive. It's going to be interesting to see, Tony, just exactly how... Air tries to combat that set play, I think, that's being made by the Bracknell Bees on the power play, trying to break that box down. Certainly on the Bucks' goal, a lot of guys driving for that net there, and, uh, you know, if, if you like, they're outnumbered in front of their own goal, and it's not a good circumstance, especially when you're trying to kill a penalty. Well, it is Bracknell, of course, who uh, are going to have to kill a penalty at the start of this period, but they have a pretty impressive penalty-killing record. Down in the box for them is Jeff Johnston serving a two-minute penalty. In the adjacent box to him also, you can see just behind us there, is uh, Sean Barham who's serving the 10-minute misconduct penalty for the Air Scottish Eagles. But they have five out skaters, the home team Bracknell, now in the lighter or the striped shirt, playing for our right, have only four men out skating plus their goaltender, man advantage on the power play with the Air Scottish Eagles down possession. This is Mark Wall, number eight. Men in front, both left and right. This is Alan Schuler, combining with Mark Montanari, number ten. Puck knocked down. This is Sangrelo. He'll go for the shot, surely. Good reading by the goaltender, Mark Bernard. And a good defensive cover ensures that he didn't get a shot away. Puck, though, eventually coming loose behind the goal, and the goaltender, Bernard, out there helping out with his defence. Still the power play, an advantage for the Air Scottish Eagles in possession at the moment. Good save again by Bernard because you can hardly see that shot as it went in from that uh, blue line. We speak about a pick all the time, and the Air Scottish Eagles do this one so very well. I want you to see if we can see Alan Schuler here just step in from the Bracknell B, who's in the top of the forecheck there. There it is, Schuler holding that guy off which allows Bo to get that clear shot away and of course other players driving for the net. There's the pick as it takes place. All right, that's what you like to see. That gives that shooter that little bit of extra time, which is so important. And meanwhile, running repairs needed to the goal led away to our right. It's David Sinclair, but Mark Bernard taking a rest out of his goal. Well, uh, Andy Carson and the linesman Lee Young is the man with the needle and cotton, as you might say. A little bit of a problem with the moorings there on the nets and uh, when they pop out or that hole that's in the ice there just gets a little bit too big. So easy for that net to pop out, Tony. They've got to do something with it. Well, the butt end of the stick thing uses a hammer there to knock the nets down, but it's still not down this side looking at that. Well, eventually the officials, well, Mark Bernard, the man who's provided the running repairs, the goaltender with the butt end of his stick. The goal is now secure, and the face-off is to Bernard's right. Nine seconds remaining on the power play. Counting down, top right-hand corner of your screen. It's the Bracknell Bees in possession, but outnumbered. Back on the ice below us comes Jeff Johnston. Collect the puck straight away and send the man, Makosh, away on his right. Makosh is looking for support. Loses out here on the attack now. The air is Sangrelo. Grelo's got ball on this side. Puck, the shot is off target. 
Borba regains possession under pressure. 39 is Wade Buxis in possession now for the Bracknell Bees. Grant Pellerin flips it out of the defensive zone. Ryan Camus. Support from Davidson Pierre, number 17. And Parko gets forward. Parko looks for support. The pass goes astray on the far side. And now it's Bracknell on the break. This is Wade Buxis, score of their first goal. Great defensive cover. Eventually all the support needed. Davidson Pierre is 17 for air in possession. Matt Hoffman's in front of him. This is Hoffman. Hoffman picks up the loose puck and looks to be brought down on the far side. Officials let it go. This is Joey Middlestack. St. Pierre can't control the puck. St. Pierre gets a second chance now. This is David St. Pierre. Picked away by the goaltender Mark Bernard. Into the corner goes the busy St. Pierre. Bracknell can clear this away. They do now with Ferricoli. Good stick handling by the Italian Canadian, who has support from Chris Brandt. More support on the right, but the puck's dumped into the corner. This is Crawford in the neutral zone, playing on defence tonight for the Bracknell Bees. Ferricoli. Good stick handling quality still with Ferricoli. Are they a stop in play? That effort's off target. This is Joey Middlestat behind his own net, loses possession. Still Bracknell in possession and Dobson gets his patch together in the nick of time to keep that out. A busy spell for the Bees, but the icing call will take it back down in that area. So. Some great quick beat there by Colin Ward going in around the net there. Joey Middlestead losing the puck behind the net. Turnover deep in air territory. And of course, that causes trouble. There's a turnover. And look at these quick legs. Gets the shot on goal. Few options, a little pick there by Ferraccioli on Middlestead to not allow him to get back into that play. Once again, the Brackle Bees giving their players that support that they need. There you are. Vince Boa has to come out to get that shot, but that communication element there between Middlestead and Boa was a key issue. This is Sam Grillo, number 27 for the Air Scottish Eagles. Locked away by the elbow of Mark Bernard. Gomes it is that produces the clearance, and that will produce an icing call to take the puck deep down once again to the Bracknell defensive zone. 21 there for the Air Scottish Eagles. So Cali Biet. One league goal to his name so far this season. Look for more. Yeah, he come off a very successful season, didn't he, with a uh, Swindon club in the first division last year. And, uh, you know, he was a very prolific scorer down there. But, you know, you can see that he's got all the characteristics to be a very good player in this Super League as well. well six of his seven goals this season have come in the cup matches. This is... Uh, Burke. Rather, Dennis Burke that time, Greg Burke that time. Puck knocked around the boards. Dropping down into the neutral zone. Good dummy there. Grillo is in front here. In possession is Catanaro. The defensive cover goes in there again from Greg Burke, number 23. Shot of the term. Watched clear by Mark Bernard, the goaltender. This is Scott Young getting forward as he's taken into the boards. Big heavy check there going in from uh, Todd Kelman. Catanaro is the number three for air. In possession, combining well with Jamie Steer. Sam Grillo having to get back into the neutral zone to help. Steer tries to spread the play. Good combination work here. Grillo switches left. This is 21. Terry Biet goes for the wraparound. Cover from Matt Cote. Middle stack keeps it in. Eventually the danger cleared here. And uh, the icing call will go take the play deep down into the Bracknell defensive zone. Bracknell still lead by two goals to one. Yet to see the first goal in this period. It's under four and a half minutes gone. Air Scottish Eagles, if you can see them there, just about caught with too many men on the ice. And that's what all the controversy was about and all the supporters here in Bracknell yelling, puck coming out of the zone. But well, once again, boy, I'll tell you, very, very close to being too many men on the ice. They're yeah, looking lucky in more ways than one. Might have been a hooking penalty there as well, Bob. Face off then. So uh, McCosh is number 77, winning it here. Support from Junkin. Knocked into the corner here. Quickly, this is by Mark Wolf. 
box, this wins it back for home team. This is Shane McCock. Good defensive work there by Middlestaff. Getting forward for air is Mark Wall. And he's still going. Wall can't get a shot away this time, but he's held by Vince Bow knocking it into the Bracknell zone, but now here comes Wade Butchers. We've got a two-on-one situation here and a great chance for Bracknell. Butchers created the opportunity. Brilliant save by Rob Dobson, getting across his goal like grease lightning. This is Joe Middlestaff on defence. For an air side piece to keep that one out. Exposed for a moment that air defence, but great work by the goaltender to prevent the third goal. Rob Stewart is number 16 for Bracknell, knocking it into the neutral zone. Chris Brandt knocks it down. Van Ford, great skating here, and again, read well by the goaltender. Because he's put under some pressure there by Ward, and again, miracles from Dobson, who's going to get a penalty here. As Ward went across the net, the goaltender appeared to bring him down, and that would be a penalty and a power play to Bracknell. Well, I'm not certain who's got the high stick call, whether it's David St. Pierre, or Joey Middlestead, but one of them looks like they're going to be going off on that high stick in front of the net. Ferricioli with a puck out in front, Crawford in the slot area on a quick one-timer there. Look at that first shot. I don't know who that was, maybe... Well, that looks like, I think that's David St. Pierre that's going in there. Well, oh, we're wrong. Rob Dobson in the Bracknell or in the air nets there gets that stick up. So one of the players on the ice is going to have to serve a penalty. Well, there's the two-minute penalty, and there's big protest down here because we understand that injury might have been caused to the player brought down, and that might carry an additional penalty. Well, it looks like it's a 2 plus 2 call as well, Tony, so this is what Angelo Catanera won't be happy with. I mean, that's the call. The call will be accidental, obviously. That's why Angelo Catanera will be concerned with that four-minute call. He's saying, hey, two minutes maybe, but not certainly four. Once again, one of the players, Tony, that was on the ice will have to serve that penalty. Well, Angela Catanara, the captain, is not too pleased with the two plus two call on goaltender Rob Dobson, and the penalty will have to be sat out, as Bob says, by one of the players who's on the ice at the time. Now there's a big argument as to who it should be. Andy Carson, our referee, is over at the air bench there having a conversation with the players and coaching staff. He knows, he says, who was on the ice at the time. It's going to be served by one of you. And uh, coming over to uh, serve the penalty. John Parco is going to serve the penalty. You could say he's the junior player, but they sent him to do it. Coming up, these fans. Come on. So there is John Parco, the newcomer, who has to serve the penalty. Obviously, they don't take the goaltender off. Rob Dobson stays in there. John Parco will be serving four minutes. We can see it again with Bob Carroll. Well, there's Crawford with that big shot. Now, Dobson's trying to regain his balance there, and it's just the butt end of his stick that catches the Bracknell player. Well, it was interesting there to see the players not believing that the uh, penalty should have been called on their goaltender. But uh, certainly our evidence there shows the camera doesn't lie, and Bob Corral pulled it exactly right. This is Chris Brandt in possession for the Bracknell Bees behind his own net. Knocked around here. Power play. The man advantage now. Alan Schuler knocking the shot in there for the Air Scottish Eagles. Could have provided a short-handed goal, but now here comes the Bracknell Bees. This is Ferracioni. Great save again by Dobson. Twice in succession. That was miraculous. And if he keeps that one out, there's another one. The goal leading a charm life on this power play. Air Scottish Eagles penalty killing.
ability is being tested here to the full. Knocked into the corner. Once again, the Brackle Beast trying to catch that offside player on this power play, get a little bit fancy in there perhaps, instead of shooting the puck when they had to. Now here playing hardly as if they're a man short at the moment. Walk with the shot! scores a short-handed goal for the Scottish Eagles makes it Brackle two air two bit of a difficult goal to swallow for the Brackle bees because it's very innocent all players back the shot Mark Bernard I know that he wished he had that he certainly saw it the whole way he just mistimed it and of course it went behind him and tied this game up for the air Scottish Eagles what a huge goal for Mark Wolf and unfortunately Mark Bernard just doesn't give enough emphasis to that shot on goal. Dumped into the corner by Rob Stewart. Goal, the fifth short-handed goal scored against Brackle in the league so far this season. They make the penalty of that. Amazingly, Bob Brandle have a most uh, brilliant penalty-killing record under normal circumstances, but short-handed goals, considering five, well, that's quite some going. It is. I mean, it's a difficult call. I mean, I know that Mark will be happy with that goal, but the important thing for the Brackle Bees is, is they must try and regroup off of this. They've still got plenty of time left in the power play to try and create some offensive pressure on the Air Scottish Eagles. So let's forget about that one. Let's concentrate at the task on hand. Let's get back to our ways and moving that puck on the power play. We saw there an example of Bracknell's uh, power play record this season, but that's going to make it count from goals the other end. And, of course, they considered that short-handed goal, which can nullify a lot of the good at the other end. Bernard trying to set his own team moving and making up for that goal. Only Basingstoke in the Super League has conceded more than the five short-handed goals conceded in the league so far by Brackman. Basingstoke have conceded six. Chance here now to pull it back. Stewart with a shot. Now on the break again. This is the Air Scottish Eagles and Jamie Steer scored their first goal. Great penalty killing this because it's positive. Still they push forward. This is Dale Junkin behind his own net. Well, sometimes, Tony, when you're on the power play, you let up a little bit if you like. And you don't maybe work as hard for those loose pucks. And Bracknell has still got to try and keep his legs moving because Air's got all kinds of fight in him on this penalty kill. And they're winning those loose one-on-one -on -one battles at the moment. Oh, they may come again, trying to clear it, but uh, battling again there. Great right up to Dobson, is producing some save after save after save. The goal comes to drift in the end, but Rob Dobson there. Well, over three minutes they've been short-handed, and their goaltender, if he'd like it, it's not here in the box because he's producing miracles. Well, you know, you say you don't fault the goaltender. Look at that, one save, two save, Dobson. But look at where he is, he's still up on his feet he doesn't go down unless it's an absolute must and that's a sign of good goaltending Tony don't commit yourself because as soon as you're lying on that ice it's very difficult for you to get back up again well, there's his record on the night two goals and 22 shots just about equal to his normal record in fact which is 90.1 percent coming into tonight's game prior to tonight he considered 30 goals and played in every single league game for his club this is Chris Brack for Brackman. Bracknell pushing forward. Half a minute remaining on this power play. Still they come forward. Great defensive qualities again being shown by Air here as they clear that beyond the neutral zone. And now it's Chris Brandt. This is Joe Ferracholi for Bracknell. Another interception. Brandt gets forward. Brandt is robbed in possession here. Hoffman it is that takes his lead. Down below us coming back onto the ice. Park over sitting out friendly for his goaltender Rob Dobson. And the double penalty has been killed successfully by the Scottish Eagles. Not only have they killed it, they've scored a short-handed goal in the process. 
whole match is tied up at two apiece. This is Chris Brandt. Again, Dobson. His defence, the quality of the defenceman in front of him, clearing away those rebounds, Bobber, a telling feature. But now here they come. This is Bobber again. Bobber's going to get a shot away, which is just off target. The goaltender came out well on the angle. This is Chris Brandt. Bucks is calm in that one. Scott Young gets in the way. But Dobson sees it safely behind his own net. They will surely clear this into the neutral zone. No, they don't. Big mistake here. One must ask with that goal conceded whether perhaps Air it was who let up on that, having successfully killed the four minutes shorthanded and then let a goal in just as it's over. Well, you know, they did a, a super job, as you say, Tony, of killing that penalty. And, you know, Bracknell had the opportunities on the power play, but let's face the facts Dobson in the nets there stood on his head, did a great job. Well, we've got some injury news, and our reporter at ringside, as usual, is Nick Rothwell. Guys, I was just talking to Colin Ward in the first aid room. He's got a cut above his uh, right eye that he sustained in that little, little incident in front of Rob Dobson. What he said to me, he said that he was coming in on Rob, and Rob was just turning. His butt end got up in Ward's face and accidentally caught him from the chin up to the eye. I think he's got a stitch, but he's tough. He'll be out there right away. Well, hot news, Colin Ward. The two two-minute penalty serves on behalf of the goaltender, Rob Dobson, successfully played out, but now that goal from Dale Junkin has put Bracknell in front by three goals to two. This is Jamie Steer. The Scottish Eagles have got another penalty call here, and Bracknell will be one short, and the Air Scottish Eagles will have a chance to capitalise on the power play. Interesting tactical scenario coming time and time again here, Bob, as we get these successive power plays. Well, there's Calvin. He's got the hook there. As one of those quick air forwards that looked like number nine, Jimmy Steer there, just goes around him. Andy Carson quick to the mark and pulls him off on the hooking call. Well, there's uh, Todd Kelman taking himself a drink, sitting in the penalty box below us. And that will give the Air Scottish Eagles another opportunity to capitalize on the power play. Air Scottish Eagles so far, a short handy goal through Mark Wolf. It went in front early on from Jamie Steer, but it's Bracknell that leads 3 2. There's the out power play record this season five successes in 36. That's in the Super League, of course. Sean Barham it was that started that move. Puck knocked into the corner. As it was his own side of the red line, Ice and Core will take it back down into the air defensive zone. bench will be fairly happy but we've got an opportunity to have a word with our studio expert tonight Vecchio Sacratini. Vecchio the lead changing hands twice already where's it going to finish yeah well we don't know where it's going to finish but those were two uh, two goals that just happened you know I'm sure Bernard wanted that long shot back and uh and Eric goes around and turns and gives one up in, uh, in their own hands and uh, Dale Duncan made a pay for that bad mistake there what about the efforts though of the goaltender Rob Dobson when his team was shorthand because he produced a succession of saves they were miraculous oh he's been great I mean he just he kept them in the game and gave them a chance and uh, they ended up getting a shorthanded goal well unlucky though one going in there from uh, Dale Junkin to put Bracknell in front and with the game just over halfway through the home team leading by three goals to two remember in two previous meetings this season Air have won both of them between the clubs this is Sean Barham for Air on the power play Henry Clock counting down so 70 seconds remaining Vince Bow is number six seven is the newcomer Parker Mark Bernard tight on that and came back off his pads and the rebound flipped right across the face of his goal just past the far post. Scott Young getting forward. Chance for Parco. Bernard comes down into the end it goes! And the Air Scottish.
Scottish Eagles are back level as the puck went just about everywhere. I think the final touch went in there from John Parko to collect his first league goal, but his second for the club in a week. Well, a loose puck in front of the net. Parko with that big shot, but the rebound coming right back up to him on a huge gift there. But what a move here by Scott Young to create the play to Parko, who's in the slot area. Now, that's the ideal situation to get the shot away. And, of course, they've got the Brackle Bees running around a bit on that box. Mark Bernard is down. You can see it. He commits. He doesn't get the puck on this play. No options for him, I'm afraid. It's just a shot by Parko into the empty net. Well, a first league goal for the newcomer, the 26-year-old from Sault Ste. Marie. Well, there's Wayne Crawford has been ejected from the game by the officials. We'll await the official call as to see what happens. But Brackner will have to play the rest of the game without Wayne Crawford who's been playing tonight on defense. Well, that'll certainly hurt them. Wayne Crawford, a very versatile player, thing about it is he can play forward in defense but with Scotty Campbell out as well tonight he started the game but we haven't seen him at all and I believe he's taken his equipment off this is really going to hurt the Brackle Bees in the defensive corps you can see by the look on Dave Whistle's face there you know when the plot thickens obviously it's a little bit more pressure for the guys that continue to play This is Brant for Brant. Brant will be tied up at three all at the moment. And power play goal for the Air Scottish Eagles. This is Air again getting it out. This is Borba number 30. Good interchange of passes. Shot goes in from Brant to move. This is Ferracioli. <laughs> Kept in well. This is air coming away here. This is Dean Bulba. Bulba in possession, knocks it into the corner. Wolf is taken into the balls. Puck still thrown dead above, they pile in. Eventually the puck comes loose here. Brilliant save by Bernard. Well, well, the information that we hear from the timekeeper's bench is the exclusion of Wayne Crawford was for abuse of an official sent packing with a game misconduct. He will play no further part in the match. But of course, from his team's point of view, it is an individual penalty. Wayne Crawford, number 28, as we said, you know, I think he had the altercation there, actually pushed the official, the linesman. And of course, when that happens, there's really no discussions on that play. You get the game misconduct. Well, we saw uh, um, Dave Whistle, the coach tonight there, and uh, he won't be too pleased with that. Andy Carson decided that was the penalty should be imposed upon Wayne Crawford. And he plays no further part in the match. This is Jamie Steer for air. Chance created on the far side here. Great opportunity there for Harry Viet moving in fast. Another penalty call down here in front of us. And uh, this time Andy Carson is Johnny on the ball here. And into the penalty box will go the air player down in front of us. And uh, that will restore. A chance to hear from Nick Rothwell, who has with him Jeff Hogue, who's not playing tonight, of course. Jeff, uh, Vince just grabbing a two-minute minor there. Yeah, it's a too crucial time of the game right now, 3-3 on the road. Uh, not a good time for penalty. I didn't really see the play, so I don't know if it's a good call or not, but hopefully I can kill this off. How's your injury coming along? Uh, not too bad. You know, it's questionable day-to-day, -day, but I'm going to make sure I'm ready for the finals next time. That's the most important thing. The boys looking forward to it? Oh, uh, definitely. We're using these next two games tonight and tomorrow get geared up for the weekend and we're hopefully going to go in there and get a win over Cardiff for the, for the finals. Thanks a lot, Hody. Thank you very much, Nick. Well, the penalty call down in front of us. Vince Bow is the man in the box from the Air Scottish Eagles, uh, which means that we now have a situation out on the ice where Bratton will have five out skaters, Air have four, and the power play with the home club, Bratton will be. 
Rob Johnson equal to that one. Well, they are sitting off. Vince Bow on an interference penalty, and I know that talking to some of the coaches in the Super League this year, this is one of the calls that can be a bit controversial. There's the shot. Fractal hoping at this stage for some sort of a rebound off that shot on Rob Dobson. Nothing happens there. He manages to hang on to it. He's very, very good on rebounds. That's what makes him such a quality netminder. Vince Bow is the man in the box down below us. Sitting out a two-minute penalty, and one and a half minutes of that is remaining with Brackle on the power play with a man advantage. This is Rob Stewart. Stewart with a shot. Puck comes loose. Dobson could barely see him and eventually gets a foot on that. And this game could go either way, Bob. It really is a ding dong battle. Well, you know, specialty teams and power plays are becoming so very, very important. You know, when you take that man advantage, look at the setup here. Rob Stewart, he's the shooter on the play. But how many Brackle Bs you got in front of that net? And of course, here with a man short, they're forced to put two guys down there just as well. So that leaves that top part of that slot area open for the big shot from Rob Stewart. Well, there are the penalty minutes on the game. And of course, uh, we do know that Air's 20 minutes actually includes uh, the misconduct penalty for Sean Barham, and the total for Brackle includes the game misconduct for Wayne Crawford. Brackle in the stripes, of course, playing the puck about on the power play. Six power play the game away, the Brackle Bees. Scored one goal on it, and that was almost a second. Posh is the man back on the blue line. Puck knocked in. Dobson, the busy goaltender, knocks it away. Puck held up well by Pellerin. He has support from Buxis, 39. Hey, Buxis switches play. This is Dale Junkin on the far side. Rob Stewart's on the blue line. Stewart and Junkin exchange passes. Now chance there on the break. Getting uh, forward by Matt Hoffman. Hoffman going all the way and still having to go on his own. Now Brackwell on the break as it moves from end to end. This is Tom Gomes, avoids the check well. Gomes still with the opportunity, but now Scott Young comes away for the Air Scottish Eagles. Puck dumped into the corner. Won't be an icing call, of course, because they're short-handed. They successfully have played out that penalty because Vince Bowes back on the ice. And another successful penalty killing exercise for the Scottish Eagles. But this is Brandt with a shot. Dobson clears it at the second attempt. Catanara has lost his helmet. Air on the break with Scott Young. He's got support behind him from Vince Bow. Bow can't get a clean shot away. Fermicholi it is coming out with a putt for the Bracknell Bees. Brandt to his left. Kills the putt stone dead. And now coming forward for the Scottish Eagles and Catanari. This is Mark Wolf, but just offside. What a game we have here. Some controversy, too, as well, between Angelo Catanero and Chris Brandt. Sort of two big heavyweights, if you like. Catanero losing his helmet on the one play. He's a character player. Angelo Catanero, and he's not going to back down from anybody. And I can tell you one thing. It certainly would be some match between him and Chris Brandt. Here's the rush by Brandt just to get the shot away. Catanero doing a super job, hold his man off, taking the body because he's a defenseman and he's got to make sure that he does that, not allowing Chris Brandt to get that clear shot on goal and into the air net. Battle between a native North American and an Italian there. Both Canadians are hard. Bernard knocks that down. This is Greg Burke. Well, now moving with a purpose. Dennis Burke is going to chase it into the corner. Scott Young is with him on defence for air. Buck eventually coming loose, Sangrano. This is Scott Young, number four. Young steps one way and then another. Nine for the Scottish Eagles is Jamie Steer. He loses possession. Dobson knocks that down. This is the air captain again, Angelo Catanara. Catanara, lo Catanara loses his balance when it matters, but Sangrano is 27. Knocked into the corner, will produce the icing call. And the action will revert deep down to the Air Scottish Eagles defensive zone, with just under three minutes of the period remaining. There's their new dad, Jamie Steer, 
as we said, congratulations to him and his lovely wife. But uh, he was a prolific goal scorer actually for the Air Scottish Eagles last year, and that was one of the reasons why I'm sure that the coaching staff wanted to bring him back. This year he's had four goals in league play. He's scored uh, six goals as well in cup matches. So he's not done too bad this year. This is Bracknell on the attack. And Dobson is equal to that. But I think we've got uh, something happening on the edge of the box there. And uh, the referee, Andy Carson, saw the goal come adrift. And that will produce a face-off in the defensive zone. At one stage, I think somebody thought there was going to be a penalty there, but it was simply the goal coming adrift, and Andy Carson was right there. Lakash coming deep in the zone. Big Rob Dobson there, just hugging his post like a good goalkeeper should. And that just knocked the netting off its mooring. Well, Rob Dobson is certainly playing his part here tonight. The biggest goaltender in the Super League. And he's playing well. Again, Dobson, quick hands, sharp hands, great catching mitt. I'll tell you the biggest problem with these turnovers in the zone, and that is, is that the goaltender's not ready for them a lot of the time. Now, Dobson makes the save, but you can see that he's back in his net there. A lot of coaches say, hey, don't take anything for granted. Don't try and do the defenseman's job. Make sure that you're ready yourself, just in case the puck doesn't get out of the zone. Well, Mr. Dobson has been good and ready for most of tonight. Been a fine game. Fourth time we've seen here this season, and the fourth impressive game there, uh, Goldender has had. Well, and he's got to go into the old mass contest there, Tony. I mean, he's got a nice one. He's got the uh, the flags on there. There's a the Scottish flag. What's the red one on the other side there, Bob? The Maple um, Leaf of Canada, isn't it? That's the Maple Leaf of Canada. And of course, on the back, he's got the old nickname Dobber. The action then, deep in the air defensive zone. Remember, with two and a half minutes remaining on the period, it's tied up at three all. Sam Grillo in possession. Not forward quickly there by Matt Hoffman. Dobson picks it up as it spins towards his pads. And again, that will kill it stoned in and produce a face-off to his left. I'll tell you another thing about these goalkeepers here tonight, Tony. A lot of the teams like to dump the puck into the offensive zone when they're going on the offense to try and gain possession yeah but you want to keep it away from these goalkeepers because most of them can certainly play the puck very well speaking about Dobson in the air nets but most certainly Mark Bernard and Bracknell who's got those four assists from last year and that's the reason why is because he plays the puck very well Dobson again down quickly to that one as that shot went in from the blue line Sam Grillo it is but we've got somebody hurt down in front of us here Play still goes on now. This is San Grano in possession. Bracknell bringing it away. Ron Camus, the man with the injury, away to our left. Camus will make his way to the bench. Shaken, as they say. He's going to stay on. Big, hard defense. But this is Brant, number 25, for the Bracknell Bees. Puck coming out into the neutral zone. Slapped back by Rob Stewart. Bracknell have to clear the zone. Now, coming forward here while well, he's stuck. Uh, Alan Shula. This is Sean Barr at number 16. Barr and shot way off target here. Following it up well there is Alan Shula. This is Sean Barr. Loose puck comes out on the backhand. Can't get the shot away. Comes out here now to Shula. Shula's shot is just off target. Still air push forward. Mark Bernard not getting a clear side of the puck in front of his net there for a while. But now, here's the break here. This is Dennis Burke. Brilliant check there by Ryan Camus and certainly we've got a penalty call coming up here Andy Carson took his time to back up his mind on that decision and Ryan Camus will go to the box for two minutes Camus on the trip here's the shot being made by Burke he had no options there but he did the somersault or almost a somersault in the air cutting cross ice is Ryan Camus and the tripping call is made. Well, Angelo Catanaro is having a word with the referee, but referees don't change their minds, of course. And in the box there is Ron Camus, which is a two-minute penalty for tripping. 
Angelo Catanara, I think, probably claiming he thought it was a very good check. But Andy Carson is the man who makes his mind up. It's a trip. And now the power plays with the Bracknell Bees. I think sometimes the players feel on plays like that, it's a 50-50 call. Kuma got the better of it, but is it actually a tripping penalty? Well, as you said, Tony, the referee always gets the final say. I've never seen one change their mind yet. That's a very good point. Power play Bracknell. With just over a minute remaining on the period. The seventh power play of the game, the way of the Bracknell Bees. Can they capitalise on this one? So far in the seven, they've capitalised on one with the early power play goal from Wade Buxes. This is Wade Buxes. Back to Chris Brown. Over this side, the Posh can't control the puck when it matters. And uh, the goal is adrift. And once again, Andy Carson says we have to stop play and produce a face-off. 41 seconds remaining on the period. Dale Junkin, he's the guy that's the quarterback on this power play. They like to put him way on the far side there, and he's the one that makes that cross-ice pass to Shane McCosh. That one doesn't work. I'm not a real favorite fan of that play, Tony, because if anything happens in the middle of the ice there, McCosh has gone in the zone. That leaves one guy back on defense. At best, you've got a two-on-one situation with a team that's shorthanded going the other way. Frankel on the power play. Held up behind the net. Slap it up the ice. They can do that, of course, because they are the short-handed side. There'll be no ice in call, and McCosh is going to chase it back. Bernard almost popped out of his goal. Good forecheck in there by Jamie Steer. Puts the home side under pressure. Andy Carson, the referee, says that was a dive by Montanari. Chris Brack getting forward. Well, as that went across, Junkin, if he hit the target there, Dobson might have been struggling. There goes the Hooter to bring down the curtain on another lively period. A second period, which has ended with a little bit of rust up in the corner. But the officials will surely sort that out. There's much to do about nothing. A challenging period it has been indeed. We can have a chance to see that again. But Bracknell 3, Air 3 is the score. It started with the home side leading two goals to one. But then Air pulled it back. Bracknell went in front again. And a goal from Parco, his first in the league, made it 3 all. Well, you join us here at the Bracknell Ice Rink, where Bracknell have shot one goal in that period to make it three all because Air got two back. You can see there, though, 33 to 22 shots on goal, and it was 20 to 8 Bracknell. So, really, it was their period, even though Air managed to get two goals back. Well, we thought the early part of that second period belonged to the Air goalkeeper tender, uh, Rob Dobson, who really had a tremendous first part of the period in keeping Air in that game there. He's talking to Nick Rothwell. Rob, seeing a fair share of uh, rubber tonight. Yeah, we got a little down there, you know. Uh, a couple penalties. One minute on me, I didn't think it was a just call. I wasn't really sure who it was on, but we got ourselves in some penalty trouble. And, they, you know, they're working hard, and they're the type of team that continue to come at you, and they've got a lot of power and speed up front. So we've got to be a little aware of that coming into the third period and sort of shore up our own end a little bit more and then worry about scoring the goals later on. They've lost uh, another one of their defensemen tonight. They're going to be really thin in that area. Do you guys uh, concentrate on that at all? Well, you, you kind of have an idea who's out there at all times. And, you know, as the game goes on, it gets a little tiring. Hey, maybe their arms are a little sore now from shooting so much. So hopefully we can get down there and work on that. And that's one thing to key on is that you can put some more pressure on their D with only four. It's a little bit more beneficial for us. And uh, third period, yeah. Are you, are you happy where, with your defenseman, where you're taking the shots from? Yeah, I think we've done a pretty good job. Again, they've had a lot about eight minutes that period in power play time, and I think most of the shots are coming from the periphery. they got a couple in tight, but I think the guys are doing a great job clearing the rebounds. I've fought a few pucks there that I didn't quite get with my glove that have come back in front, but I think for the most part it was a, a solid road period. You know, we're tied going into the third period, and anytime you play on the road and have an opportunity to win the third, that's a bonus. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Rob Dobson, the air goaltender, talking to our man Nick Rothwell. He really did have a good first part of that period, didn't he, and kept air in the game? Uh, definitely, he was uh, he was outstanding. I mean, the save he made on the two-on-one when the game was two-one was a huge save, and he made some big saves in the power play. In fact, we've actually got the shot where Pellerin had um, a real good uh, go at him, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. They, I think they catch one of the air guys uh, pinching one of the defensemen, and they get a two-on-one here. And Wayne, he makes a great play here. He hangs onto it, goes around the D, and Dobson just gets across, pat on it, and makes a great save. 
so it was quite ironic really that it was Air who came back and you said you thought that they'd have to go for the goal very early on in that period they did that it was Wolf who got on the end of it very positive play from them because of course they were penalty killing yeah here's just a, I think it's just an innocent play and I think Bernard would like to have that shot back you don't beat him out from out there too often and just when Mark's got a good shot and he beat him on the short side so Bernard wasn't at fault there for coming out because it would anybody would say perhaps he came a bit too far left his goal a little bit wide there well he came out to cut off the angle but I think he he might have misplayed it and I'm sure I'm sure he's uh, talking to himself about that one of course that was two all but Dale Junkin uh, the top scorer in the league last season came back for the Bracknell Bees well here's a crucial arrow you never want to go through the middle of your zone uh, trying to break out and uh, they just picked it off great pass by Buckus and Dale just with a great finish there beat Stopson you'd expect a player like Junkin to take advantage of a mistake like that wouldn't you well I mean he's a great goal scorer and uh, you know when you give them chances to score they're going to score and it was crucial for Bracknell to get that goal back at that point to make it 3-2 yeah they need the lead back I mean they had a chance they gave a they gave up a soft one there to make it 2-2 so it was a big goal for them but they weren't dead and buried of course for that period because Parco came back for them to make it 3-0 this was the goal that did that they want a power play of course and here's another power play goal and it was a great play by Youngie there Scott Young just made a great pass across and they crashed net and uh, John Parker got, the, got his own rebound and uh, put it up in the net you said you thought that period was quite wide open really yeah it was wide open I think it was a special teams period I mean there's a lot of power plays and a lot of penalty killing and uh, you know Bracknell had a lot of chances and Dobson stood on uh, who's got the edge for you Oh, I think Bracknell's got the edge right now. I mean, they've been uh, aggressive. You can tell it was shots, shots on goal, I guess. Though. Yeah, they got a lot of <laughs> shots. But, uh, I mean, air's right where you want to be. You want to be 3-3 three, three on the road, you know, and 20 minutes to play for. Thanks very much, Vezio. Well, next Saturday, the first silverware of the season is up for grabs. It's the Benson Hedges Cup Final, where the Air Scottish Eagles are taking on Vezio's team, the Cardiff Devils. Well, these boys know that all work and no play makes Jack a very dull boy. So they got together in London on Tuesday for a special preview dinner. But I can tell you the talk was all about the Cup Final. Not a pad, puck, or stick in sight. This was a night off for Aaron Cardiff and a chance for the finalists to relax at the Benson and Hedges Cup pre-final dinner in London. The Eagles have put the disappointment of losing in last year's final to Nottingham behind them and are looking forward to making amends this time around. We were here last year and uh, hopefully we've learned uh, from our mistakes and the new guys along I think they're excited about being there they know it's it's an important cup to win so we're gonna go for it the Eagles had a tough semi-final round against an informed Manchester Storm air stuck to their game plan and took them in the second leg of the semi at home it's a system that's been working well for them all season long when we're successful this year we play a very tough physical not a fighting game just a very physical aggressive game which we didn't have last year. And every time we've played that way, we've been successful. And you've got a big, strong team in Cardiff. And if you go and play them, you know, like, like you and I grew up in sort of a shinny game and a wide open affair, we're gonna get, it's not successful for us. We have to play a very strong defensive and we have to play a very physical, intimidating game, which we did down there. And we find we're successful with that because we have the power to back it up. Cardiff are through to their first cup final in three years. As one of the most established clubs in the Super League, they're eager to expand on their league title success of last season. The club's been successful over a, a long period of time, and it's a, it's a good feeling to, to win. You know, that the fans like it, the players like it, the owners like it, and uh, you, know, you want more of that feeling. You know, it's, it's a great thing to, to win. So after last year winning the Super League, we're obviously disappointed that we missed out in the playoffs. But now we've got our chance, you know, to, to get in there in a final and get another piece of silver. Where, you know, we're, we're going to obviously try our best to get our hands on it. We've beaten 7-4 in their rank, and hopefully we'll do the same thing. Our our main goal is to play good defensively and always have a guy back and not give him too many odd man rushes. I think we gave him one in the game that we beat him in. We gave him about 41 in <laughs> the game they beat us in. So that's our that's our that's our goal is to be be good sound defensively and, and get a lot of opportunities let, let them make the mistakes and if we do that we'll be we'll be all right the players and coaches looking forward to next week's Benson Hedges Cup final but CEO Jim Lynch says it's going to be a very physical game do you agree with him yeah, it'll be a physical game I mean the air you know they play well they play good uh, good system they, they sit back they, they play the trap and uh, they try to counter on errors and uh, they'll be physical now we heard earlier on that Dennis Purdy looks like he's going to be out for three weeks Jim Lynch is kind of hedging his bets and saying perhaps not 
Is that a crucial loss for them? Well, I'm sure it's a crucial loss whenever you lose somebody. But I mean, they're, I'm sure they're, they're going to pull together and you know they'll give us their, their best fight. But uh, it's just one player, and it, that doesn't make a team. And uh, but they'll, they'll play well. One well, sense is this is going to be a really aggressive final because Cardiff haven't won it for a few years. Air, of course, the beaten finalists from last year. We're expecting a really frenzied atmosphere. Oh, it'll be it'll be great. I mean, it's, everybody's getting excited about it right now, and uh, all the players and fans are excited about it, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Thanks very much, Fetsio. Yeah, well, we're looking forward to it too, and of course, it's a game you can see live and exclusive on Sky Sports 3. It's next Saturday, 7 o'clock, the Air Scottish Eagles taking on the Cardiff Devils. Before then, though, there's plenty of ice hockey if you fancy getting along to a game yourself. Sunday, the Devils, that's the team, are in action against the Bracknell Bees. I've seen him making his notes to take back to Paul Heavey for that one. Sheffield Steelers are taking on the Newcastle Cobras. And in the Express Cup, the Basingstoke Bison, the Air Scottish Eagles have got to travel over to there for that game. Manchester Storm are taking on the Nottingham Panthers as well. So plenty for you to go see if you fancy it. Well, right now, it's 3 all. At Bracknell, the Air Scottish Eagles having a pretty active period. This was the goal, Wolf's goal, that made it 2 all. As I say, it's 3 all. Join us for that after the break. Coming up on Thursday morning, it's the richest golf tournament in the world. The Sun City Million Dollar Challenge. Colin Montgomery defending his title against a host of superstars, including Faldo, Langer, Woosnam, and last year's runner-up, Ernie Els. It's live from Sun City, South Africa. The action starts Thursday morning, 9.30, Sky Sports 1. Right now, though, it's a little bit cooler. We're at Bracknell. Bracknell taking on the Air Scottish Eagles in Super League. It's three all at the moment as we head towards the third period. It's been an action-packed game. Well, there are more and more ice hockey teams springing up all over the country at the moment, and it could be pretty soon that we're travelling to Ireland for Super League and other action, because it looks like Belfast are going to get a Super League team very soon. Nick Rothwell's talking to a man who's their managing director. Yeah, Gabby, with me is Bob Zeller, the managing director of the Belfast Giants. They'll be the Super League franchise that'll be coming out of uh, Ireland. Bob, how's the development going? Excellent, Nick, excellent. We'll have a building by the year 2000. We'll be up and playing by then another team in the league it'll be great are the people in ireland really looking forward to this oh you can't believe how excited they are we've been taking some people from northern ireland to other games and they of course don't know very much about ice hockey but they love it and uh the super league hockey tonight are you enjoying this action this is great stuff isn't it end to end bang to bang it's it's wonderful hockey it's what hockey's meant to be thanks a lot bob you're welcome nick thanks very much nick well we're about ready to face off for the third period here the Bracknell Bees taking on the Air Scottish Eagles in the Super League. It's three all after two periods. Let's get on and join our commentary team, Bob Carroll. But first, Tony Millard. Well, you join us in time for the third period with the teams tied up at three apiece. It's all to play for. Remember, if it's level at the end of the third period, then we go into sudden death overtime for up to ten minutes, and the first goal would decide the result of the match. We've had two power play goals by Bunches for Bracknell Bees and Parco for Air with their third goal, a short-handed goal from Mark Wall. We've seen all sorts of things happen, including the ejection of Wayne Crawford, number 28 for Bracknell Bees, for abuse to the referee, Andy Carson, and occurring immediately after that goal by John Parker, the third goal for our Scottish Eagles. So it's all set for the final 20 minutes of a stirring encounter. Bracknell 3, Air 3. We're underway with Air in the darker strip, defending the goal to our right. And Bracknell, the home team, in the strike tops. They're defending the goal to our left. In possession, Joe Perricoli, number 47 for Brack. Chasing it behind his own net, the home side is Tom Jones. Support here from uh, Greg Burke. The far side is Chris Brown. Knocked into the corner, Greg Burke is going to chase that back. This is Ward on the break here, and a great opportunity there. Ward has scored number four for Bracknell Bees. Colin Ward has hit the net and provided his first league goal for his brand new club. It's Bracknell 4 air 3. Well, the Bracknell Bees be happy with this one, but here will be complaining. They're wondering if Ward has went offside there, but look at the moves he makes on Dobson. He gets them going the other way. And, of course, he puts it behind him on the backhand. No one around on the far side there for the Air Scottish Eagles. And once again, Colin Ward gets a goal on the power play. 
Well, Colin Ward, 39 seconds into the period. And that's his first Super League goal for a brand new club. The wow. Brentwood Beast fans will be happy with their newcomer. That's a huge goal, I mean, right at the start of the period again, Tony. And that's got a psychological effect, as we spoke before. Looks like there was a delayed penalty call on that play by Andy Carson on the air Scottish Eagles. As a result of that, Ryan Kumu doesn't come out of the penalty box there. He stays in. So once again, the Bracknell Bees maintain their power play. Well, the penalty clock will have to restore the balance of Ryan Kumu's penalty. On the break there for Colin Ward, the referee was on the point of calling a penalty. He delayed it while Ward was in possession. And having delayed it, the goal counted, the penalty was completely eliminated, and back we were to the situation where it remains a power play with the Bracknell Bees. 15 seconds, we understand, is the amount remaining on the penalty for Ryan Camus down below us. But of course, Tony, the damage is done now, isn't it? Because the Bracknell Bees have got that final goal, will put them up 4-3, and... Three and uh, as you said, it's a very tough comeback, especially when you're in the other team's building. So, the Air Scottish Eagles forced off the defence and still the man advantage with the Bracknell Bees. Here they come, coming forward. This is Pellerin, knocks the puck down. This that it would have been an icing ball. Wade Buxis has support. And now, on the break, this is Bo. This is Joey Middlestack. Down below us now, and back up to strength of the Air Scottish Eagles. This is Junkin with Peller in number 22. Good defensive work pushed away here. This is Sean Barham for the Air Scottish Eagles. Both teams now at full strength. All to play for in the remaining 18 and a half minutes. A cracking game. This is Buxis. Interchange of passes, knocked in by McCosh. Alan Schuler is number five for the Scottish Eagles, coming forward on the break. Has support to his left with Matt Hoffman in possession now. Hoffman dumps it into the corner, the chase is on for Borba. Montanari is number ten. Puck is held up in that corner, good work from Todd Kelman. Now the Bracknell Bees move smoothly away, and we've got another penalty down here as Tom Gomes comes away, and down here is Borba. On the ice, we await the call. Now, similar circumstance as to the one in the second period. The call there on the interference. This time it's Matt Cote as he grabs a hold of, it looks like Balba, the uh, Air Scottish Eagles, prevents him from getting any sort of depth on the puck carry, and he'll get a two-minute interference penalty. Into the box then goes Matt Cote. Interfering, interference penalty on Matt Cote, and now we will have yet another power play, this time the way of the Air Scottish Eagles. There's hardly been a time tonight when we've had five on five, Bob. Well, there hasn't, you know, and specialty teams will be very, very important, as we said. Pushing forward the Bracknell Bees. They can hit it the length of the rink because they're short-handed, of course. Now the Air Scottish Eagles will build for the back. Desperate for this power play goal that would level it up. This is Mark Wolf, knocked down by Bernard. Rebound cleared away by his defence in front of him. Puck held up in the corner now. Comes loose here by good work from Borba. Borba's got support on the blue line, but this is Sam Grillo, number 27. Mark Wolf is here. If he can get a shot away, it could be dangerous. That's off target. Knocked away by the stick of Mark Bernard. Still kept in by Sam Grillo, number 27. Borba having a little Barney on the edge of the crease there as the box defence is working for the Bracknell Bees at the moment. Montinari loses possession. Borba gets it back for the visitors. Time is on their side. Wolf with a shot, takes a deflection off target. Good defensive work by the home team Bracknell. Power play clock counting down. So there's 40 seconds now remaining. Well, they've
they're defending well. Well, and they are gaining possession of the puck, of course, but not moving it very well, which enables the Bracco Beast to keep that box-type format set up all the time. As long as the puck's not moving, the players don't have to move either. Baba ends up taking a shot on that play, coming from a very bad angle, and there's obviously going to be no problem to Mark Bernard in the Bracco Nets. Well, plenty of activity on the benches there. And, uh, the extra puck not needed. The face-off now is deep in that Brighton defensive side. Seven goals we've had already, and one has a feeling that perhaps this isn't the end of it. 4-3 to the home club, Brighton. The officials wanting the face-off band change, and from Barham and sent packing. Barham eventually gets the puck. Boris Scott Young. This is Barham again in possession around the balls. Parker misses it. Rob Stewart it is that puts it away on the backhand. This is Scott Young for the Scottish Eagles. Young retains control under some pressure. The break from Barham. He changes passes with Young number four. The dummy by the big defenseman. Bo, it is, shot goes in, shot goes in from Scott Young. Pushing forward, Bracknell Bees. Comes out of the edge, out into the neutral zone. Of course, is number 77. This is Ferraccioni for Blackboard. Good work there at the end. One back, knocked into the corner quickly there by Matt Hoffman. Bracknell forced to move back, but they change on the fly. Nearly getting caught with two in out of the ice, and with the bench door open, the puck sails out through it. There's the best play I've seen all night. Follow your man with a puck, eh? He'd have won a prize in that little contest during the interval, getting it through that gap. He's definitely off the ice, though. Well, there's Dave Whistle, and that is Jim Lynch, the air coach. And he has a little bit of thinking to do at the moment, because his team, of course, is 4-3 down. Well, this is the time when defensive hockey really does come into play. As you say, you've got to continue to do the little things right, make sure that you pick your men up in crucial situations, and not give either team the odd man advantage, especially when they're going in the offensive zones. Ryan Camus is the man in possession for the Scottish Eagles. And put under some pressure by the forechecking capabilities of Bracknell Bees. Dumped into the corner, the chase is on. Alan Schuler under pressure from Dale Junkin. Good work here for Air. And Harry Viet, number 21. This is David St. Pierre. St. Pierre support to the right. And the offside call there. Schuler getting in just too quickly. Alan Schuler of the Air Scottish Eagles, and he's been one of the guys that's been very steady for them all season long. Game in and game out. He's always there, plays well. Big advantage of him, though, he's very crucial in terms of air defense and getting the puck out of their zone. He is a very good puck carrier, Tony. Good skater. Well, getting a shade too far forward then and producing the offside ball, but that is in the neutral zone, just outside that Bracknell defensive blue line. Brighton will force back and one withdraw themselves. That is cleared once again. Ricocheting around the boards, taking the top of the plexiglass, and that'll produce a face up again in their own defensive zone. Rob Stewart, the captain of the Bracknell Bees, has had three goals in the league so far, Tony, and uh, he's often uh, been known as, as perhaps a bit of a defensive defenseman, but when he gets going forward, he can certainly play the game well. Native of Selkirk, Manitoba. That's just outside of Winnipeg, and there's a lot of good hockey players that are playing in the UK from there. Well, Rob Stewart will be pleased to captain a winning Bracknell side against Air for the first time this season if it stays like this. But Air aren't done yet. They are in possession. This is Catanara, their captain. Puck dumped into the corner. Mark Wolf with the chase. Eventually, the danger cleared into that neutral zone. But Dobson will watch this carefully. Both on by the officials and now Catanara, the air captain, is in possession behind his own net. 
That puck went through the crease, just the far side of the crease there. So obviously the icing call being nullified. Interesting play. We haven't seen that happen in a long time. But now it's air in possession coming away. And number 10 for them is Mark Montanari. Montanari knocks it into the corner. Gomes takes a big hit behind the net there. Actually cleared into the neutral zone. And the passing for Bracknell now. Just finally, this is Stewart getting forward. Support from Prematoli. Support here too. And Gomes has managed to survive what happened at the other end. Now Stewart's going to get the shot away, but it's high. And Dobson will be pleased to see that go over his bar. Prematoli in possession. Taken out well by Catanaro. Scott Young knocks it into the neutral zone. Bracknell, good interchange of passes. This is the newcomer Ward who scored their fourth goal. Scott Young knocks him down from air around the plexiglass. The glove hand, <laughs> but it's knocked down by the glove of Hoffman. Eventually, right up the ice where Mark Bernard it is the Bracknell goaltender who tries to set his team going. That will surely be icing and give us a break. Air are busy enough, but they've got to come back, Bob. They do, and, uh, you know, there's still plenty of time left in this game. 12.51, all kinds of things can happen, and it's very important that the air side tries and keeps their composure and patience and wait for the breaks, because they're going to happen. Someone will make a mistake out there, and that's usually how a goal is cost in the Super League. So, Sean Barham with a face-off for air. Knocked into the corner. Bright will push back. Air on giving up yet. This is Sean Barham in possession. Barham here. Good work on the backhand. This is Sam Grillo. Still air fighting. Sam Grillo is 27. Sean Barham is 16. Whacked away and knocked out into that neutral zone and air have to start again. Knocked into the corner. This is Sam Grillo. Grillo trips over and can't retain possession. And now it's Brattle on the break and they're moving forward a pace here, particularly on this side with Wade Buxis. Chase into the corner. Mittenstadt delivers the check. Buxis avoids it. Around the boards it goes with Sean Barham is number 16 for air onto the loose puck. Good stick handling qualities from Barham sends his own team away. Sam Grillo is 27. The cover from Matt Cote. And uh, basically we've got a penalty call here from referee Andy Carson. And uh, so we got Brian Pellerin going off on a slash there. Just coming out of the air zone. Andy Carson putting well, the old slash on the hand. Yep. Well, Brian Pellerin is in the box, and this power play could surely be the one that could count for air if they could capitalise on this to level the match. If we go to overtime, which we would do if it was level at 60 minutes, then the first team to score in the 10-minute period will take the two points. The other team will get its point for a draw, and now we can look at that slash. There we go, Pellerin gets the stick up a little bit there on the air player coming out of the zone. Andy Carson says, you'll sit for that one. Yeah, though, with a man advantage now, need to capitalize upon this. And moving forward with a purpose here. Surely that, Andy Carson lets that go. The air team looking for the hooking call there. Mark Wolfe it is that knocks it into the corner. Montanari and Grillo are on that side. This is Sam Grillo. Mark Wolf is back on the point. Loses possession here to Dale Junkin. Still keeps it in though. Wolf has support here. Grillo will get the shot away and does. And brilliant save from Mark Bernard. This is Dino Borba. Good box defence here by the Brangle Bees. Once again, experts in penalty killing. Can they kill this one? No! There's a goal from Montanari has tied it up on the power play for the Air Scottish Eagles. Just what they wanted. It's Brangle 4, Air 4. Tremendous patience shown by the Air Scottish Eagles. They work the puck down low, drive to the net, but of course it's that God Almighty rebound that causes problems once again. A given goal tried to happen there between Grillo and Balba, but it's the shot on goal, and it's a gift to Montaneri who's there to pick up that rebound, if you like, or that loose puck in front of the net that never ever really did get there. 
Well, all to play for, just under 11 minutes remaining. Mark Montanari's goal has tied it up at 4 all. A power play goal. Third power play goal we've seen this evening. Well, Mark Montanari, he scored some very big goals for the Air Scottish Eagles this this year and his inaugural season in the Super League. The thing about the guy is, is about five minutes before that, we saw the physical presence that he has out there as well on that big hit deep in Bracknell territory. So you can see that a guy like him, he's not only good offensively, but he comes to play physically as well. Well, it's not often that uh, the bank Bracknell penalty killing unit has broken down, but uh, tonight they've conceded two power play goals. October the 12th, they last conceded a power play goal in league action. This is Steer. A little bit of rough stuff in the corner here now. Tactically, Bob, in this game, which team would you suggest now has the qualities to win? Well, I still think it's very tight. I think it's a game of mistakes, Tony, at this point in time. You know, we're talking about 10-31 left in it, but you can see that the Bracknell Bees and the Air Scottish Eagles are tying two guys up a piece there in a zone fighting for a buck. So no one wants to be outnumbered on those loose one-on-one -on -one battles because that's what creates turnovers. Face off then, deep in the... Bracknell defensive zone now. But Bracknell on the break. Can come out of that zone. It is smoothly into the neutral zone. The puck is dumped into the corner. The chase is on. Dobson has to be careful there. Middle stat is his defence for the help him. But the Bracknell Bees are buzzing around the net at the same time. Bees fans think the penalty should have been called there. This is Parco getting called. Great turn by Stewart to save the day. Dumped in. Deep into that Bracknell defensive zone again. And they will break here with Rob Stewart. Stewart has support from Greg Burke. Now a chance for a break here. This is Wade Bucks' good defensive qualities here from St. Pierre. Joey Middlestack clearing the danger and knocking it into the neutral zone. Getting back well here is Greg Burke, the defenseman for the Bracknell Bees as both teams change on the fly. Burke goes by two players and an official and knocks the puck across goal. Dumped into the corner here, and that will produce an icing call in the far in the far corner. But a chance to have a word with our studio expert for Cardiff, Vecchio, Sacratini, Vecchio. It's tied up at four all. Which team would you fancy? Well, it's, it's all tied up here, and uh, two big power play goals for each team, one for each team, and uh, I think they're going to tighten it up here, and uh, it'll be an interesting nine minutes left here. Vecchio, looking at the game as it stands now, power play goals, shorthanded goals have been in abundance tonight. That's unusual. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of special teams tonight and a lot of power play goals and that's really crucial in one game. Well, the game still has all to play for with just under nine and a half minutes remaining. Puck held deep in that uh, air defensive zone, but Scott Young will come away. By one man, by two men, into the neutral zone. Gets it back on the rebound, dumps it into the corner. Surrenders possession with that. It's Brightnell in possession. Good work by Dennis Burke, and he's robbed in turn here. Good work by Sean Byron. Plus, oh, that was a point blank range save from the goaltender, Mark Bernard, and I don't think he could really have seen that. That's those quick feet of Mark Bernard, and he just got that foot out there just in time to get that cross ice pass. That boy, that was a that was a goal for sure. Well. The reactions to the goaltender prevented it being so. Ferracholi in turn is robbed there by Sean Barham. Scott Young knocks it around the boards. Ferracholi knocks it down. He has support from Cote. Support two on that side from uh, Greg Burke. The puck runs loose and uh, to the rescue there is the lively and energetic Mark Wall. Well, a little bit of aggro over this side. Capanaro is involved. The loose stick picked up by Wall. The home fans boo. And it's now air on the break through Montanari. Kicked away there is almost a deflection going on his own man back. Cote Bernard had to knock it away. Still air on the attack. 
Creating space. Pote takes Forber into the corner. Puck knocked down. And the puck kills Stone dead. And the face-off. There's Montanari recovers. Will again be deep in that Brangle defensive zone. Four all with just under eight minutes to play. If it's still levels of that, we go into overtime. Chance to look at that incident at this end. Temper's starting to flare a little bit. <laughs> Colin Ward grabbing Angelo Catanero's stick. Catanero gives her the old baseball swing. He's batting a thousand tonight. So he swings his golf clubs, you know, Bob, when he plays it true. They say he's quite a good golfer. Has he taken any money off of you this year? He says he's got a good golfer. All right, well, well, that's important. You know, you've got to have confidence in that game. We wait our meeting. Action deep in that Brackle zone again with air in possession in the darker strip. This is Montanari, number 10 for air. Cote with the cover behind his own net. Borba picks up possession. Shot goes in, takes a rebound. Air are going to have to start again from deep in their own zone. Good work here by Alan Schuler. This is Ran Camus, his defensive partner. Wolf takes it into the corner. Camus, shot come cross, come pass. Still, possession game by Mont. This is uh, again Montanari, a rather bold one. Borba gets it across, chance here for Schuler's shot, and Bernard is equal to that as each takes their man, a little bit of rough stuff breaks out in mid-ice. Again, the officials step in. All's well that ends well. Well, it's the quickness of the Air Scottish Eagles forwards. Balba getting that puck back to the point there. Big, huge shot by Schuler. But once again, the Brackle Bees having to hang on to guys. What's happening is tempers are starting to flare now a little bit. Guys are getting a, bit, a little bit more upset out there. The game's tight. It's getting close towards the end. But I'm sure that the official, Andy Carson, here tonight is going to ease up a little bit. He still wants these teams to play with seven minutes left to go in the third period. Well, his linesman too, Simon Northup and Lee Young working well. Working well as a team, these three officials. This is Sam Grillo knocking the puck into the corner. The chase is on for Shane McCosh, the Bracknell defenseman. Struggles to keep his feet as the puck is held up against the board. Surrenders possession. Sam Grillo is number 27 for air. Flips it round the boards in turn here where the loose puck is collected by Jamie Steer under pressure. Carrie Viet picks up the loose puck now. This is Carrie Viet. Viet still going, Viet still going. And the brilliant save from Mark Bernard. It's a glove save at desperately close range. Well, we can go down to the benches, join our reporter, Nick uh, Rothwell, who has with him an injured defenseman from the uh, Scottish Eagles, uh, from Bracknell, Scott Campbell. Scott, you tried warm-up, uh, didn't quite work out. Yeah, I got a bit of an injury right now, so uh, I'm just taking it day by day, and uh, we got 10 days off after tomorrow night in Cardiff, so hopefully they'll have time to heal then. Proud of the boys tonight? Yeah, they're playing well. Hopefully we can pull it out. we got six minutes here. Uh, we really don't want OT. We're short and two bodies, so hopefully we'll get one and pull it out. You're not strangers to overtime, though, right? No, we're quite used to it. Uh, we've had a few so far, and uh, we haven't fared too well, so hopefully we can get it done in the regulation. If not, uh, hopefully we can get it done overtime. Uh, with with the, the injuries and the lack of defense, does that really hurt you guys a lot? Well, of course, I mean, injuries are always uh, hurt a team at any time, no matter what. But, uh, you know, we've been playing well, we've been playing through them, so hopefully they'll continue to do that. Thanks a lot, Scott. No problem, thanks, thank you. Well, Scotty Campbell there, obviously, realizing the importance of making sure you have a solid and full lineup in this Super League, because the Air Scottish Eagles are starting to come on a little bit. You know, the momentum was certainly in Bracknell's favor, but the steam's being turned up a little bit here by air. Those quick forwards not allowing a lot of time for Bracknell to come out of their zone. And the statistics in this period, the air out shouted that shooting Bracknell by eight shots to two. And it's still a lot to play for, just under six minutes remaining, but there are the shots for the game. Bracknell still with the advantage, but the score's what counts, it's Bracknell four, air four. And as we've seen, a lot of specialty team situations, power plays, you know, for both sides, and uh, the team's allowing to capitalize there, so, you know, hopefully this game will continue to play at five out players apiece. 
which will let the game be decided that way. That badge we saw there, the Bracknell 10th anniversary this year. Ten years of Bracknell Bees from 1988 to 1998, they say. Action, though, deep in the air defensive zone now. Ron Camus is the air defenseman. Alan Schuler is number five. This is Jamie Steer, number nine, who eases the puck away from the boards. Eventually it's cleared into the neutral zone and the icing call will take the face off back down that end as it crosses the goal line at the far end. It's big Matt Hoffman of the Air Scottish Eagles and he's had four goals in league play but he's a big guy six foot three and what the air coaching staff like to do is they like to get him driving to the front of that net because he's big he's strong and if any rebounds are available he's there to kind of knock them home I'd like to see the goals that he scored because I'm sure a lot of them would be from that hard work just in front of the net have a talk about the new boys in a minute Bob because they played their part here tonight one for each team but uh, the action thick and fast now this is Alan Schuler around the boards held up here a great opportunity for Bracknell great defensive cover there by air and bringing the puck away is Matt Hoffman this with him is Jamie Steer. The trainer is Sean Barham. Barham's going to get the shot away, and it's just off target, but it was vicious. Dumped into the corner now. Barham is going to leave that, and that will produce a face-off. There's the offside call by referee Lee Young will produce the face-off just outside that defensive zone. Jamie Steer trying to get the trailer there. And of course, that's Sean Byram. It doesn't really, it's not supposed to work that way, but it eventually does. Byram, of course, shoots that puck wide. And I think you wish he had that one over again. Well, both sides have introduced a new forward within the past week. John Park over air and uh, Colin Ward for Bracknell. Both have scored tonight. They've had an influence on their teams, haven't they? Well, as we say, there is an adjustment period for any player coming and playing the British game. And, you know, just the fact that you're in another country and you're having to make that adjustment. But I think we'll hear a lot more from both these players as the season goes on because they've come from very competitive leagues. And that certainly will add depth to this Super League. Cover here from Vince Bow for Air. The chase is on for Junkin, number 91, for the Bracknell Bees. And Air come away here with some smooth passing. And this is great work here on this side from Borba. Borba withstands the pressure and uh, Joe Middlestad it is that keeps the puck in and now it's knocked down to the Johnson at the edge of the crease here, Dorley. Well, that looked as if it had goal written all over it. Two men in front of the goaltender and now the puck's under a pile of bodies. Well, both Callum and McCosh got caught going forward before the puck actually did deep in the zone there. And what did you have? You had two Air Scottish Eagle players in front of the net. There's the two of them. Baba and is that Mark Wolf there. Bakosh eventually comes back into the play, but you've got to be sure that that puck's going to get out of your zone and you cannot leave anything between your goaltender and the guy that has the puck. Boy, that could have been very dangerous for the Bracknell Bees deep in the zone. They almost left it to each other to put it into the net there. But now, air pushing forwards. Borba with the slash on that, but the possession retained now by Bracknell Bees coming forward. This is Todd Kelman. Glove work by Rob Dobson. Puck helped out. Big check there by McCosh. Sends Borba packing. This is Wade Bucks, it's number 39. Around the boards it goes. Vince Bow is caught in possession. Chance here. Great chance there for Wade Bucks. Once again, twice there as it was charged down. A good defensive work by Joe Middlestat in front of his keeper. I'll tell you, that's a quality shot as well because Buxus gets that puck, looks up, picks his hole. And Rob Dobson takes it away from him. Huge save. This is Vince Bow. Middle step is to his left. Vince Bow knocks it into the neutral zone. And the puck well, disappears into the terraces there. It's a fine interception from Matt Cote just inside his own half of the ring. Well, you can see as we spoke before, and this is a game of mistakes, and that's what's happening now. You've got to play solid defensively because when you make that mistake, the puck's turned over or whatever, you can see the scoring opportunities that are created. It's all because of that one fundamental, basic mental mistake that's happening there, and you get that scoring opportunity, that's where the hot goaltender comes in pretty handy, and both goaltenders here tonight have certainly done their job. Well, I think we should remind everyone, of course, that if it stays like this, we go to overtime. And the regulations in the British Super League are that if we go to overtime, each team is already assured of one point, and the extra point goes to the team winning. That's the first team to score in the 10 minutes of extra time. If it stays level and we don't get any goals in that time, each comes away with a point. 
This is Scott Young for air. David St. Pierre is number 17. St. Pierre's stick handling qualities give possession to Parker. Parker's shot is off target. Scott Young will watch this carefully. That's Dennis Burke, number 13, for the Bracknell Bees, dumping it into the corner. And again, the puck will disappear down to the Bracknell defensive zone for a face-off there on that icing call. Angelo Catanero, what a great find he's been for the Air Scottish Eagles. I think both off and on the ice, and uh, he's been a tremendous part of the success of his club and the fact that the interest in ice hockey and air has grown tremendously over the last year. And it's a credit due to these guys to getting out into the community and resurrecting the spirit that there is up in that Scottish community. Well, a little bit of decoration on the chin of Angelo Catanero. Beards are the policy, goatee beards for the Air Scottish Eagles looking ahead to the Benson and Hedges Cup final, which you can watch exclusive and live next Saturday. Yeah. Beards that these teams tend to go in cup competitions and playoff stages, but they don't shave until they finally lose. That's changed a little bit, Tony. It used to be a full beard, but now it's gotten a little more stylish. They go with that goatee as well. Well, either side can still win this one, goatee beards or not. This is Matt Coto, the defenseman, round behind the net. Air can't keep it in. Catanaro's accidental pass finds uh, Scott Young. This is John Parker, the newcomer. Dennis Burke, number 13, knocks it into the neutral zone where Scott Young provides the interception. Dumped into the corner by Dennis Burke, which allows his change, team to change on the fly. This is Angelo Catanaro, the air captain, knocking it into the neutral zone. The chase is on here for Sean Barham, or rather, Matt Hoffman. This is the scoring over. This is Ferricioli. Interception here. This is Sean Barham coming back, backtracking to his own zone. Knocked into the neutral zone. Rob Stewart is number 16. The Bracknell Bees are into the final two minutes of the game with it still level. Neither side giving up. Back with his joint. Hoffman finds Barham. Barham knocks it into the corner with a backhand. Both teams certainly know they've been in the game here and they could have more time to come yet. Ryan Camus is number 24 for Air. Air it is changing on the fly, so too are Bracknell, but Bracknell have three men back in possession. Dale Junkin is number 91. Puck locked up the ice, so that will produce an icing call. 81 seconds remain before we could go into overtime. Bob, when teams face overtime in the last two minutes of the game, do they look forward to it? Do they play for it? Or do they pray for a goal? <laughs> I think you pray for a goal. You know, you've, you, you've just got to continue to do what you've been doing all game long because that's what's really got you there. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a lucky break that's probably going to decide this game because both teams have played very, very well. They're the coaches. That's Dave Whistle today without his skates on on the back of the Bracknell bench. We saw Jim Lynch before that. But the action is on the ice. Wolf can't get his shot away. Wade Bucks is clearing it into the neutral zone as far as Scott Young. Scott Young comes forward and dumps it into the corner. Bucks is loses it to his own goaltender, Mark Bernard, that clears that away. And this is Bucks's. Can it be Bracknell to get the late goal? Can it be the yeah, Scottish Eagles? And that's tipped out by Ron Camus, and we're into the final minutes play. Well, there's one of the big Tony, that I think we have to look to to probably get a game-winning goal. The Super League scoring champion last year, Dale Junkin. If you had to pick one, who would you pick on the Air Scottish Eagles? We'll go what? with Junkin for Bracknell, or I will anyway. What, to win the game or to score a vital goal? To score the vital goal to win how, the game. How about Scott Young coming forwards? All right, well, we'll go with that. There is Dale Junkin, leading goal scorer in the league last season. Could be a key to it. I know in talking to most of the players, you know, I mean, they're finding that this Super League is that much extra tough this year. You know, the players are a little bit better and, uh, you know, it's quicker out there. And you've got to work a little bit harder to get those positive results.
Face off then, deep in the... Little bit of rust up there in front of the goal and temper spraying. Here's a circumstance of a face-off where you've got to make sure that you've got your man covered. Everybody's got to pick somebody up. You can a lot allow that Bracknell B player to get to Rob Dobson in the nets. You've got to hang on to him. Dobson hangs on to that puck and does a good job there. Shot goes in from Stewart. Just off target, comes back off the plexiglass. Both teams conscious of time counting down. This is Dale Chunkin. Good interception by Sean Barham, who almost inadvertently puts his pass his own goaltender, but he's got to be better than that to beat Rob Dobson. I'm sure that was a planned play. He just wanted Dobson to hang on to that puck. They've got to make sure that if they're going to get the puck out of the zone, they do it properly. Face and there's off. a nice little pass, eh? Face Fire off the him. other side of the goal. <laughs> well, Dobson's had a lot of work to do now. Dale Junkin against David St. Pierre with this vital face off. Both sides, are they playing for time? Number five is Alan Schuler. Comes into the neutral zone. One back by Wade Buxis. This is Ryan Camus for air. Possession is Rob Stewart, the captain of the Bracknell Bees. Alan Schuler with the interception into the last 30 seconds of the period and of the game with overtime beckoning. Sam Gallo knocks it into the neutral zone. Not back here. Ryan Camus will chase it. The chase is on for Pellerin. Dale Junkin in his 91 winning him. David Sinclair is 17. Final five seconds of the game. Ryan Kabu wins it back. Comes out here and they can't keep it in the zone. There goes the hooter, there goes the whistle to bring down the curtain on a game that's finished at 4 all. Final period goals, one for each side. Ward scoring for Bracknell. Montanari, it was for Air Scottish Eagles. But we go into overtime at Air 4, Bracknell 4. Well, we're still live and exclusive in Bracknell. It finished 4 all after normal time. We're going to go into sudden death overtime now, which means that we're waiting for the first team to score. When the first team score, they've got the result. However, it could finish a draw after the 10 minutes of sudden death overtime is over. Let's rejoin our commentary team now because the teams are almost ready to face off. It's Bob Corral, but first, Tony Millard. Well, the overtime statistics come into play now. Bracknell have played two overtime games this season, lost one and drawn one. Air has played one and lost that to Manchester. Air did not lose in overtime last season since Super League started. So, the action into this final period. Ten minutes of stoppage time. Overtime. Andy Carson will get us underway. The action with Bracknell defending the goal to our left in the strike shirt. It's four all going into this overtime period. Held up against the boards. Montinari is number 10 for the Air Scottish Eagles. Remember, we've got 10 minutes timeout to stop it. Shot goes in from Tom Kelman. Backhand, brilliant save by Thompson, typical of many for him in the match. The great defensive work here as well by Angelo Catanero to try and prevent the shot on goal, but it just goes to show you the concentration that's taken here. Rob Dobson comes up with a huge save. Face off then deep inside that uh, air defensive zone. Be taken by Sean Barham and the Air Scottish Eagles and 47 for the Bracknell Bees is Joe Ferrancholi. Back into the corner it goes. Will there be a tendency to play safety first? Remember, both teams already are short of a point for the draw. We're playing for the win point now, which would take one team away from here with two points and the other with one. We don't score in overtime, but they both go away with one point. They do, and uh, you know it's been a long game, and of course, both teams are the game tomorrow night as well. So, 
you know, it's going to be, uh, it's going to play its havoc. This is one of the reasons why the coaches and the players say that, you know, you should have a break between games rather than play on a Saturday, Sunday, a Friday, Sunday, a Saturday, Tuesday, or something like that, because you get the betterment out of all the players on the team. Barham with the cross shot there, and, uh, well, almost on the end of it is Jamie Steer. Steer's got to chase this one. Ryan Camus will knock it around the boards. It's going to be chased here. Into the corner it goes. Jamie Steer again in possession. Set the scoring on the way tonight. Still Steer in possession. Loose one comes back. Into the neutral zone. Both teams playing carefully here, but uh, who knows? This is Ryan Camus knocking it into the neutral zone. Good stick work by Jamie Steer at the second attempt. Wins the puck back and dumps it into the corner. Sinclair will chase it. Kelman is the defenseman for the Bracknell Bees. Interception there, but now the Bees on the break here, and they've got a chance here with Dale Junkin. Junkin eased away there. Good defensive work by Vince Bow to take him wide. Still Bracknell, Dobson, Dobson, Dobson again. Two saves in no time at all. And a wake up the Scottish Eagles here with Mark Montanari. Jumped into the corner. Knocked down by Bernard, who dives on that safety first. Just over two minutes of overtime have gone. And still we're level. A couple of very quality opportunities for the Bracknell Bees deep in the zone there. Again, Dobson just stacking those pads up, keeping his position in the nets and making sure that he doesn't fall down. Stay up, fellas. That's the way to play goal. But they continue to crack at that puck. Joey Middlestead shows his strength there as he knocks down the Bracknell player. Well, three shots already being piling into the first two minutes of overtime by the Bracknell Bees. Well, I don't think we're going to see anything too fancy in this overtime period, Tony. The ice is getting a little bit slow now. They played on it. Obviously, it hasn't been resurfaced yet. And that puck's going to continue to bounce a little bit out there. Bounce it may, but this is Goes stick handling his way towards goal and taken down by Scott Young. The Bracknell fans yell for the penalty. Officials call nothing, and it's into the neutral zone with back Cote for Bracknell. 23 is Greg Burke. Air retaining possession there, number seven is newcomer John Parker. Dumped into the corner now. Gomes is going to chase it. Fight for offside was that. He's knocked around the boards and he's going to come out of that. Defensive zone. This is Catanalo, the air captain. Sam Grillo loses out and eventually knocks it in. This is Kosh. Kosh has support from two men in front of him. Brandt to his left. So they can't find him. And now Rob Stewart, the Bracknell captain. Alan Schuler is the number five. This is Ron Camus. Eventually cleared into the neutral zone. This is Rob Stewart, the Bracknell captain. We've been playing three and a half minutes of overtime. Hare has yet to pack in the shot on the Bracknell goal. Junk in with the shot. Knocked away by the stick hand of uh, Bob Dobson. This is Sam Grillo, number 27 for air. He's going to knock it into the corner. The chase is on here. Puck eventually comes loose. Ryan Camus waiting on the blue line, but he's going to have to wait because coming away now is Wade Bunch, is number 39. Joey Middlestack clears it around the boards. Pellerin it is that picks it up for the Bracknell Bees with support from Bucks. It's still Pellerin's going to support here. Dobson has to close the door tight inside his post. The goalie's been a hero for air tonight. Offside call, and uh, with just under four, just over four minutes of overtime gone, well, it's still anybody's game. You know, when you get into overtime, obviously, you're a bit tired, and I think one of the first things that kind of goes for you is the psychological element. You know, you're not always thinking the best because, you know, you're mentally trying to prepare yourself, but the legs aren't going maybe quite as fast, so... The guys have really got to try and buckle down here and just make sure that they make that safe play. Catanaro it is that knocks it around the boards. 
Scott Young gets forward. Eventually, they've cleared out into the neutral zone. This is David St. Pierre for the Scottish Eagles. Remember, they have a match tomorrow night at Basingstoke. Benson Hedges Cup final is next Saturday against Cardiff. Offside call there as the puck spit out. Two line pass, I think, that time. Tom Gomes of the Bracknell Bees. He's had three goals in league play. Played in Sweden last year. But it'll be important for both coaches to try and keep fresh legs on that ice at all times. Well, those coaches are the men that have got the battle. That Come on, is certainly on, the Bracknell coach tonight. They whistle behind the bench, not on the ice. The opposite number is Jim Lynch behind the bench of the Escort of Jesus. But this is Bracknell in possession. Striped shirts, of course. Pushing forward, looking for this win. On this side, it's Gomes, the right winger. Big hit from Shorter from uh, Scott Young. Still Bracknell retain possession. Work by Thompson getting forward. Changes said they're playing Johnson up front at the moment. Certainly was playing for a while. Helping out of the back. Here they come. This is Scott Young. Scottish Eagles. Wolf knocks it down. Play is switched into the middle here now through Montinari, number 10. Mark held up by Bernard. And we're just over halfway through this overtime period. And uh, both goaltenders having to be alert. The philosophy on this play, very bad angle, not a quality shot by Mark Montaneri, but important to just make sure that you get that shot on goal because sometimes anything can happen. First shot by Ed during this overtime period. Right, will have had six shots going, raining in on Bob Dobson at the other end. And may we, may we reiterate that there's been some real quality shots by the Bracknell Bees on Rob Dobson. He's had to come up with some very crucial saves. Steer knocks the puck in. Chance here. Bernard has to watch that, and that's the second shot from here in this overtime period with just under four and a half minutes remaining. That'll produce a face-off, which the linesman Lee Young will supervise. Chance to have a look at the shooting position in the game. Well, we've been playing more than an hour of actual play. Bracknell 44, air 33. All divisible by 11. Four all over the score. We all know the importance of face-offs, but extra important, especially in overtime, and you picking your man up, tying him up, make sure he doesn't get that clear angle straight to the net minder. Bracknell on the break. We've got a three-on-two situation here. Chase on the far side. Chris Brandt getting forward. Good work here, though, by uh, Sam Grillo for the Scottish Eagles. Grillo is still going. Half the length of the ring. He's got support on this side. Can't get the pass away. And the goal has come adrift. The big men go thundering into it. Mark Bernard comes up from the bottom of the pile. And uh, Harry Biet gets back on his feet as well. There's a three-on-two scenario for the Air Scottish Eagles. But well, you got to have one guy driving to the net. I'm not sure Mark Bernard says, hey, not that far to the net, but uh, that's the guy that's going to pick up any rebound or whatever, but it looks like Viet, I think, just lost his balance on that play. Tough being a goaltender, Tony. You take those odd crooked shots the odd time from those guys coming in hard. Well, to recap on the overtime record of these two teams this season, Bracknell have been involved in two overtime games, lost one and drawn one. They have been involved in one in which they lost to Manchester. Joey Middlestaff dumps the puck in. Still they keep it in. This is Parko. Chance here. Oh, a brilliant save. Twice on the top by Mark Bernard. And really, well, Parko and St. Pierre both had great opportunities to tie up that game. And that man, Mark Bernard, was equal to both. Well, twice again, like my pal Vincio Sacratini says, you don't want to clear the puck through middle ice in your own zone unless you're sure about it. And this is what causes the problem for the Bracknell Bees as Parco picks the loose one up. And St. Pierre, he catches Bernard going the other direction and Parco gets another crack at it. Huge save to keep Bracknell in this game. Well, did you see there John Parker holding his head in his hands? He thought he should have scored from that rebound. And Mark Bernard's save record improves. Well, once again, Bernard in the nets. He was down on the play. So Barco, he's got to get that puck upstairs. He knew that's where he had to go with it. it. Just didn't work for him. That's that bad ice out there. The puck's rolling a little bit.
Chance here for the blue line again. Bernard equal to that. It was crashed in from the blue line there, this time by Vince Bow. David St. Pierre. Bow keeps it in. Parker's going to chase it. The linesman spotted that. The puck had come just out over that blue line. Well, Dave Whistle has to think long and hard. Bracknell coach, of course, behind the bench of the home team. You think it's hard on the player as well. It's much harder on the coaches because they wish that they could probably be out there. I mean, they're just trying to motivate their players to keep those legs going, but it's not easy. Not easy for the players either. They're getting tired now. Sean Barham, number 16 there to take the face off. Johnston is the man taking it for Michael Bees. This is Rob Stewart, their captain. Flicked into the neutral zone. Scott Young. So busy, so effective for air. This is Barham. Narrow angle shot there, and that wasn't going to find its way past Mark Bernard from that angle. As this overtime period dwindles down, though, Tony, you can bet that the coaches are going to try and get what they feel is going to be the most effective line out there on the latter stages of this game if it continues to go as it is. But as it wears down, you want your best players for the situation on the ice at the time. Face off, though, now deep in the Bracknell zone. Home team winning the draw. This is Shane McCosh, number 77. Interception from Scott Catanaro. Dumped into the corner. McCosh again will collect the loose puck. Rob Stewart, his captain, is to his left. McCosh is coming forward. Tries to feed his own man on the right, goes. Scott Young gets across to cover, wraps it against the boards and into the neutral zone. Round the boards it goes. This is Gomes knocking it forward. It's going to be chased into the corner. Scott Young knocks the puck around the boards. Two and a half minutes remaining in game time. Remember though, if one team scores, it's all over. Both teams changing on the fly. This is Sam Grillo in possession. The Air Scottish Eagles. Support here for Carry Viet, number 21. Viet's pass can't find his man. Air coming forward. Men in front of the net, Bernard gets down to that. The loose buck comes clear, the goal comes adrift yet again. Well, Mark Bernard, the goalie, I don't know if he's got hurt there. Brackle getting caught on a bit of a line change here. And Biet got ahead of steam up, and of course they're outnumbered in their zone. Bernard, he's the type of goaltender that does go down, puts that stick along the ice and likes to cover the bottom part of the net that way. Forcing the player to raise the puck up if you're going to score on him. Well, Mark Bernard's had quite a night. The goaltender from Hamilton, Ontario. In the overtime period, both goaltenders have saved six shots. Air yeah, pushing forward. Puck deep in the Brangle defensive zone. This is Chris Brandt. We'll be moving to the final two minutes. Chance of the break here for Ward. Pernichol is with him, but Air went it back here in the neutral zone. They're going to push forward. Sandra Lowe will spray the pass right. Opportunity there. Getting forward is uh, Alan Schuler. Schuler's now going to have to revert to his defensive duties as the puck's held up against the boards. Eventually breaks loose behind the goal. Matt Cote with the clearance. Jamie Steer can't gain possession, and now Bratt will do. Break away for Bracknell, knocked into the corner by Matt Cote. Knocked down by Rob Dobson. This is Alan Schuler in possession. Finds a man to his left in Ran Camus. Skating powerfully is Mark Wolf. Wolf goes by one, can't get a shot away. Brilliant defensive cover. Knocked down by Vince Bowes, storming forward. Defenseman pushing forward. Borba can't control the puck. Nor too can the Bracknell defence, but eventually scrambled into the, the neutral zone. Joey Middlestat is number 44. Puck built stone dead by the goaltender, Mark Bernard. 46 seconds remain for somebody to break the deadlock. Otherwise, they each go home with a point. Looking at Mark Bernard in the Bracknell Nets. He's been a key cause here. We keep saying it, but it's so very important to have that solid net binding when you need it. And, uh, you know, these goalies 
are worth their weight in gold when they're hot. And they usually get the team where they want to go. Face-off then is deep in that Bracknell defensive zone. Will this be the last face-off in that zone tonight? Montanari is there for the Air Scottish Eagles. Looking to get it back to the men on point, but there's a charge in forward. And the officials don't like that. And they will call for the face-off to restart. Different linesman Lee Young going across to take it. We spoke about this just a few minutes ago. I said that both coaching staffs would try and get their, their players right for the situation as the stages of this overtime goes down. You see Junkin out there. He's definitely a goal scorer, as we know. And they've got him out there in this crucial situation. Men on the blue line could be vital. Charge defense, the break is on. Scott Young here is here to break it up. Into the neutral zone, dumped in, strikes the skate of the linesman. Knocked in again by Montanari. Posh comes across to cover for the Bracknell Bees. Into the final 20 seconds we move. Dobson will knock it down. He will knock it sideways. Played it in the neutral zone. Could we get a late goal? Great interception here. Pellerin is coming forward for the Bracknell Bees. A home fan cheers. This is Junkin. Junkin goes all the way. Bernard. Dobson is down. Overtime. Uh, my money was on Dale Junkin, and he did a lot of work on that goal, Tony. He didn't get it, but he got a step and he drove to the net very well. And Wade Buxis was there to pick that rebound up. Here's Junkin going wide. He's got the step there. He just gets by this ball. Of course, it creates the loose puck, and Buxis puts it home upstairs. Well, Wade Buxis it was that set us on the way with a power play goal. He's finished it in overtime. Air have won by five goals to four. And our ringside reporter, Nick Rothwell, I'm sure, has somebody pretty important to talk to. Dave, were you expecting that one? No, I mean, we were just trying to hold in from scoring at the end there, and uh, oh, that's just a great feel. When you go into overtime, are you expecting to go for the winner, or do the guys kind of go for the draw? I mean, you're playing how you play at the end of the game, and if a win comes, I mean, you're never holding back, but I mean, you just don't want to lose the extra point. Are you going to call Jim and let him know the score? I'll phone him right now. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thank you very much. Cheers, buddy. Well done. Well, they didn't expect that, did they? Neither do we. We were certain it was going to end in a draw, but that's just the way they like to see it. They get the two points there, and Air get the one. That's the way the cookie crumbles, I'm afraid, isn't it, Vezio Sacratini? Just when you're least expecting it. Yeah, I mean, uh, right down to the last second, and I uh, mean, a great play by Dale Junkin taking the puck to the net and uh, creating a chance. And, they deserved uh, it in the end, though, didn't they? Because they did create a lot of chances. Oh, they created a lot of chances, but uh, Bernard made some big saves for them in the overtime, and uh, they got the late goal there. Thanks very much, Vezio. Well, we're looking ahead to the Benson Hedges Cup, which is where we'll be and next week, next Saturday in Sheffield. It's live and exclusive on Sky Sports 3. Seven o'clock we are there. Air are going to have to pick themselves up from this one. Vezio, of course, will be in action there. Vezio, we're really excited about it. We hope you are too. Oh, definitely excited and, uh, and uh, can't wait for next week. After what you've seen tonight, are you confident that Cardiff can go there and come away with some silverware? Well, we're confident. I mean, uh, we're just going to play our own game and worry about ourselves and uh, hope we'll be able to take the first silverware away. Thanks very much, Vezio. We've really enjoyed this one. It's been a very thrilling encounter between Bracknell and Air. Bracknell haven't beaten Air so far this season. It's all changed now. See you.